It was a sunny day, the day before the graduation ceremony from high school, but without any meaning or warning, he fell out of consciousness, leaving his body, and fell into deep darkness. But soon, he went to hell, and there was no limit to his panic, because there were creepy monsters devouring each other in front of him. This place is meaningless, it is soaked in blood. But why did he end up here? This thought did not give him peace. Ten days had passed at such a pace. He was insanely hungry. There was no day or night in this place. There was not even sunlight. And now he found meat. All he could eat was the rotting meat left by the monsters. He ate with effort, because it tasted just awful. But he needs to eat it otherwise he will die. To survive, he had to adapt to this cruel place. And one day when he was carelessly eating meat, he was attacked by a huge monster but he did not lose his head and threw the nearest stones at him, and in order to survive, he had to fight. After that, tears poured out of his eyes, because the guy missed his family very much. On the thirty-ninth day, in order to survive, he had to give up humanity, and in desperation, the kid decided to kill all the monsters. On the fifty-first day, he arranged a shelter for himself and the skeleton of the deceased monster, where the guy lit a fire and continued to gain strength when suddenly a strange sign appeared in front of him, which said that he had raised the level to the third, the guy had seen this for the first time and most likely he had already gone crazy, or not? With these thoughts, he clicked on the system screen and accepted the promotion. Since that moment, seven years have already passed, his current level is twenty-seventh, he was killing hellish creatures alone without hindrance, even at that moment these monsters were like worms, because he killed them with one blow. It was the twenty-fourth year since he found himself in this crazy place. The guy managed to make himself a sword from or that he received from a steel knight, and with the help of this weapon he calmly demolished the heads of these monsters. It was the fifty-first year, the boy himself turned into a monster and beheaded a pathetic incarnation. On the seventy-ninth year and three hundred and sixty-five days this year, he is finally ready to meet the demon king, because this bastard dragged him to hell. The kid can't wait to blow his skull off. It was a fierce battle, but the guy did not spare his enemies, and soon he came across the gatekeeper of the demon king. He promised to cut off the kid's limbs and throw him to feed wild animals, but these were just his dreams. And feeling the taste of possible defeat, the demon began to fight seriously. He threw the boy away and advised him to order a place in the cemetery. But the guy was not confused by these arrogant words and he rushed into the face of danger. Then he stripped the monster of both hands and jumped back to the side. A fiery shard appeared in the air, he is the boy's assistant, and strongly recommends him to finish off this monster right away, because he is a serious opponent. The demon himself was very angry, because how did this arrogant boy dare to challenge the gatekeeper himself, did he really lose his fear? And while the demon was shaking the air, this same kid punched through the monster, and the reason for such a cruel act was due to the fact that the demon was too noisy. The monster could not believe his eyes because it is impossible and after these words he fell dead. Now that the black-haired man has killed the keeper of the gate, the shard is interested in what the guy is going to do next, because this act must have greatly angered the demon king. Eighty years have passed since he went to hell. During this time he has fought many monsters to survive. Everyone has different reasons and stories for which they fell into this terrible place. But the guy has a question, why did he end up in this place and why did the demon king bring him here? That's what he's going to personally learn from the most powerful demon. At the same time, the shard begins to doubt the intelligence of the guy, because wasn't it possible to just ask politely? Flying Skull advises not to do anything stupid, but just get down on your knees and ask for forgiveness from the demon king. But the boy does not agree with this plan, because the price should be paid for being forcibly dragged here and made to suffer. Then the kid raises his sword and rushes to fight. But instead of the demon king... He saw a drip and then he was thrown into a sweat. The pale guy does not understand what is happening. Hospital? The boy has not dreamed of earth for quite a long time, about thirty years, but why the hospital? He realizes that he can't move, it's a waste of lucid sleep. At this moment, a tray of drinks falls in the room. It was dropped by a woman standing in front of the bed. With tears in her eyes, she rushed to her boy. But the guy doesn't like this dream, it's too childish, and now he wants to wake up as soon as possible. But wait, if this is a dream, then why does the guy feel like everything is real? Why? At this moment, he remembers what happened. The exhausted guy was actually able to kill the demon king. During the battle, the cowardly demon tried to deceive him, but apparently it didn't work out. 
The shard is surprised that the black-haired man was actually able to kill the demon, but what is he now? He became the absolute ruler of these lands, sighing heavily, the guy turns around and sees in front of him a table of the system that invites him to return home. But he himself does not know if he wants to return back to earth after eighty years. While the boy is puzzled by a difficult choice, the shard flies nearby and asks about this land, but these words do not reach the consciousness of the black-haired guy. He prayed every day to escape from this cursed place, so there is no reason to worry and he presses this cherished key, after which a bright light illuminates his face. When he wakes up, he sees the doctor shining a flashlight in his eyes, the guy is addressed by his name, his name is Han Dae Song, he does not believe that this is really happening. The doctor warns that it will be difficult for the boy to move at first, since he has been in a vegetative state for a very long time, but he is in a hurry to calm his relative, because if the boy continues to receive rehabilitation treatment, he will feel much better. The girl with tears on her cheeks sincerely thanks the doctor, because the guy woke up thanks to the treatment provided. At this moment, the black-haired guy lying on the bed screamed furiously. The doctor is trying to calm Han Dae Song, but he does not hear him. The kid does not understand when he moved into reality when he received a notification from the system or just now. The patients lying nearby were frightened by this strange behavior of the guy. The doctor is still trying to calm the patient down, but he shouts that no one should approach him. But without following his warning, the doctor was bitten, grabbing the doctor with his teeth. The guy wanted to know what was done with his body. Magic or it's a paralyzing poison, why can't he move? It must be all a dream, just a terrible nightmare, the boy thinks. At this moment a man in a bathrobe manages to stick his hand out of the kid's mouth, but it doesn't end there. The guy falls out of bed and starts yelling at the top of his lungs, because he somehow lived before, eighty years of struggle and suffering, and now, after all he's been through, is he really just going to die? Enraged, he declares that he will never die, the guy is not going to give up. Even when the kid was dying in the lifeless land of hell, he begged and begged heaven to let him come back. At this moment, a couple more strong men burst into the room in order to calm the patient. They grab the exhausted boy by the hands, but he is not going to give up and orders them to let him go, otherwise he will kill everyone present. The guy still can't believe that he woke up in such a terrible body. But in a fit of anger, something else attracted his attention, and then the rage in his face was replaced not by concern. In the window he saw yellow flashes of thunder and lightning in the clouds, it's a hellish wormhole, but what has she forgotten here? They put him on a cot and the guy started to resist again, but soon they give him an injection and inject a sedative, and with the words that he will kill everyone, he loses consciousness. Breaking news, today at nine o'clock in the morning over Songpaku, in Seoul, the opening of a mysterious gate took place. Fortunately, a team of hunters was quickly sent to the scene of the incident, and they took control of the nearest neighborhood. Currently, the hunter's mission is almost completed. In order to clear the area, the man reports that it may take about one hour. Then the guy in the office demands that he be immediately informed of the completion of the mission. He promises to take care of the rest himself. The hunter accepted the order of the head and hung up. The latest news was broadcast on TV in the ward. It said that thanks to the prompt response of the hunter team, the consequences of opening the gates were quickly eliminated and then the gates themselves were closed. In a half-asleep state, the black-haired man listened to the news and did not understand what was going on. Why did some hunter stumble into a dangerous wormhole? At this moment, an unknown person enters the ward. The boy in the jacket is surprised that his friend has really woken up, but the current ruler of hell does not recognize the guy and asks who he is. But soon he recognizes an unknown man, his old friend Chang Ho. Yes, that's right, it's really him. His friend is happy that the black-haired man finally woke up after a long ten years, after he lost consciousness. For ten whole years, he lay unconscious in this world, then on the day of graduation from high school, he was full of energy. But suddenly, for no reason, he fell, after which he lay in a hospital bed for about ten years. Thank God, the guy is glad that everything is exactly like that, because while he was in hell, it seemed to him that all eighty years had passed, but in reality it was not so. A friend informs the boy that while he was unconscious, his mother worked very hard. Because of hospital reasons, she had to get two jobs, but that's for later. Now the most important thing is for the black-haired man to recover as soon as possible and return to his former form and also about work, he cannot worry, because Chan Ho left him a free place. The kid thanks his friend, even though he is not very happy with what he heard. 
Soon, Mom rolls her son out for a walk saying that the weather is gorgeous today, but his thoughts are occupied with something else entirely, because in hell he fought for a chance to survive and return to his body, but in reality here he has to take responsibility for his family and help her, despite the fact that he got up on his own it can't. And this disadvantage can bring him a lot of trouble, because he can become a heavy burden for his family. There is no less cruelty in this reality than in the real hell. At this moment, his mother stops and turns pale before her eyes, their way was blocked by bandits. They have been looking for this ant for a long time and could not get through to her in any way, it began to bother them a little, is she really not going to give the money she borrowed, but it won't work with them. The girl asks for forgiveness and promises to return every penny by the next month, but the guys are tired of hearing these pathetic excuses. At the same time the woman approaches the bully and insistently promises that this time her words are true, if she is given a little time, she will really repay them what they owe. But the man was even more upset by this behavior, he was enraged that such a brat was touching him with his hands and threw the defenseless girl away. Han Dae Song watched this spectacle intently. The big guy pokes his finger at the loser and explains to her that when someone else's money is borrowed, it is necessary to return it on time. They're not going to talk nice to her this time. The helpless mother started crying and asked them not to do this in front of the child. She really promises to return the money next month and asks the gentleman to let them go. But the man is not going to tolerate empty promises anymore. He has already gone for the second year. The bully does not understand how she herself is not ashamed in front of the child. With these conclusions, he strikes her in the face. Han Dae Song could not stand this mockery and sitting on a wheelchair called these damn bastards to him. The hooligans did not hear the squeak of a small mutt and asked to repeat it, but the boy happily fulfills their request. The mother tries to stop her son, but he was already grabbed by the collar and lifted off the ground. The mother in tears asks Dessen to apologize and tries to justify him in the face of the bandits, because the boy is just a patient. But despite all the mother's attempts to prevent bloodshed, the exhausted boy continues to insult the vile insects in his sight. Bugai realized that the kid was clearly in trouble with his head since he continues to climb into trouble, but still Moltz's words offended him greatly, and he decides to show which of them is a real insect. After that, the black-haired man goes flying, but it doesn't end there, because according to the man, insects need to be crushed, and he begins to trample on the defenseless young man. While Han Dae Song is being beaten, he reproaches himself for the fact that his body is in such a deplorable state, because if not for this, the tearful girl tries to stop what is happening, but to no avail, the man continues to kick the boy, he demands that he call him again if he is not scared. The kid keeps calling him names in his mind, because if they were in hell right now, there would be nothing left of the man for a long time. At this moment, a long-forgotten system screen appears in front of the black-haired man, she offers him to take part in a divine quest, and she also warns that in case of refusal, the reward will not be received. The boy's eyes lit up with hope, he no longer paid attention to everything that was happening, he was only interested in the divine quest. With the window of choice suddenly appearing, his doubts were short-lived, because these windows were the only thing that helped him survive in hell for all eight and six years. The quest was accepted, he did not immediately understand what was happening, for some reason everything froze, namely time, it stopped. The task he accepted is called body restoration, the difficulty level of this quest is the lowest. All he needs to do is get to the marked destination in one hour. As a reward he will be given a medicine to restore the perfect state, as well as 10% to health. The guy was very surprised, can his body really be returned to its previous state? A red marker appeared in front of him, notifying him that he should overcome 10 meters. The black-haired man still can't believe his eyes, it turns out if he gets to that place he will return himself? Smiling, the kid said that he would get there no matter what it cost him, even if he crawled, the main thing was that he would be returned to his former state. Through a stream of sweat, the guy continued to crawl with all his might. It's hard for him to believe that the one who conquered everyone in hell ate how to cope with such a trifle. There are about 18 minutes left before the end of the task, but at this speed he will never be able to get there on time, and one person will not get through it, so Han Dae Song decided to think rationally. If we take into account that the system cannot issue a mission that cannot be completed, in this case everything is exactly the same, there must be some solution. After carefully reading the goal, namely to get to the destination, he realized that there was not a word that he needed to get there, which means that you can get to the destination in any way. 
After looking around, he remembered about his wheelchair and notices that it's pretty stupid that he realized it just now. Somehow climbing onto a wheelchair, he did not give up and began to pick up speed. Soon he manages to get to the designated place in the last seconds. All out of breath after this quest, he receives a small bottle of medicine, and the system also provided a little information about a small bottle. This liquid is a multifunctional medicine for restoring and improving the current state of a perfect being. The kid drinks the contents of the bottle without hesitation and immediately notices changes in his body. All the pain has disappeared, and the strength has returned to this body. Those present did not understand what had happened. The young man who had just been lying at the feet of the bully disappeared. Soon, law enforcement agencies arrived at the scene of the showdown and got involved in the conflict. At the same time, a terrified mother rushed to her son. The big guy couldn't understand how the kid managed to be in that place. But his friend offers to get out of here as soon as possible, and they leave this place. But Han Daesong remembered them and is not going to forgive their rudeness. Soon night fell. The boy continued to lie in his ward. But he was in no hurry to sleep. The black-haired man still could not understand how that window with the choice turned out to be in front of him. After the incident, he tried several times to call the system again, but all to no avail. He tries to call the window again, but nothing happens. Then Han Daesong decides to completely restore his body as soon as possible, before these scumbags come again. And for that, he needs another quest. At this moment, a message appears out of nowhere that the Pantheon is expecting a visit of perfection, and at the same moment the weakened boy finds himself in an unknown space for him. At first it seemed to him that this was a dream, but soon he saw the system window again. It said that from that moment the guy was given the opportunity to speed up his implementation. In order to return his perfect body as soon as possible, he will have to complete tasks, and the system wishes him good luck on this. Then he decides to proceed with the implementation. The second task is that Han Daesong needs to destroy these objects. The difficulty level of this task is average, and it is not limited in time. As a reward he will be given a 30% realization. The previously mentioned object appeared in front of the guy and concentrating, the Lord of Hell easily shatters the miserable bag. Now he has a third task in front of him. This time his task is to run 10 kilometers. The difficulty level is the highest, and he has three hours for all this. As a reward, he will receive a tonic for the perfection of the average value of the realization, namely 5% of it. At the same time, the black-haired boy began a difficult workout, and soon he successfully performs this task. Already the fifth task was to do a thousand push-ups in two hours and soon the kid copes with this test. His current realization is 55%, but this is clearly not enough for him. Han Dae Song does not understand the heavens are playing tricks there, he has done so much, and in total he received only half, and besides, they give a miserable tonic as a reward. He demands a normal task, otherwise he's tired of shaking the air for nothing. At this moment, he climbs the tenth test, he will have to fight with a crying demon. A pillar of fierce energy appeared on the training ground and a well-known monster appeared in front of the boy. Once in hell he almost died at the hands of this monster, but now the black-haired man is sincerely glad to see him here. A huge monster without hesitation rushed at the boy and struck him the first blow, besides with great difficulty managed to block the first blow. At this rate he will obviously die and realizing that defense is not the best strategy. The guy jumps and decides to strike back at the monster, but the monster easily presses the guy into the ground. The wounded lord of hell spits blood, he realizes what a pitiful situation he is in, because the fact that he lost his balance because of some crying demon is humiliating. The monster continues to inflict a series of attacks, but Han Dae Song dodges each one without any problems, but soon he is caught by a huge demon and being trapped in a deadly trap, the kid remembered how he killed this monster in hell. Smiling, he deprives the monster of a paw, the kid completely forgot that he could summon his sword. With him he rushed at the filthy monster and ordered him to go back to hell. After that, he woke up in his bunk and opened the window slightly. With this action he woke up his sleeping mother and rubbed her eyes. She was shocked, because her beloved son, Han Dae Song, was standing in front of her. All the same hospital, Han Dae Song is doing exercises that promote muscle recovery. But he doesn't need it anymore. His mother is standing next to the doctor and asks him if such a quick recovery is possible. After all, the doctor said that rehabilitation would take more than six months, but he suddenly began to move, as if nothing had happened, in just fifteen days. But the doctor can't find the words to explain this to the boy's mother, because such a miracle is inexplicable from a medical point of view. 
The doctor says that there are probably some features present here that they should identify, and most importantly, the guy is no longer in danger, because he is healthy. With these words, the specialist calms the frightened mother, and she is happy from the bottom of her heart. At this moment, the guy begins to resist, he is tired of being groped by doctors. But this is normal because everyone is surprised and find at least some clue in this case. But still, now the black-haired man is much calmer, because he no longer has problems with the body, namely with the movement of his arms and legs, but still this is not his final body shape and he is going to return to his former state as soon as possible. The guy turns around and finds his mother talking to the nurse. The mother thanks the girl with all her might, but she says that her help is not even close to what the woman has experienced over these ten years. From these words the mother burst into tears. And it's hard to even imagine how hard this time was for his mother. But now everything is different, and he promises himself to protect her from now on. The kid goes to the toilet, goes to the sink and calls out to the pantheon. A second later, he finds himself on the training ground. But still Han Dae Song is not happy, because this implementation is too long a process, and he wants to speed it up. At this moment, a message from the system appears in front of his face. From now on, the black-haired person is allowed to choose the difficulty level at his discretion. The higher the difficulty, the faster the progress. The guy is going to finish it the first time, whatever it is, and with these thoughts he chooses the difficulty hell. Having chosen the maximum difficulty, a mysterious sphere appeared in front of the youngster from which power flowed. It felt like it was ready to explode at any second and a white-haired man fell out of it. But the guy was not particularly worried, because it looks like a complete show-off but when he opened his eyes, he realized what kind of opponent he was. The two stood motionless on the pantheon under the red moon, but the guy is not surprised, because only he could be a perfect being from hell. At that moment, the clone began his insane attack. At the same time, the worried boy tried to make a blow to push the enemy away, but he jumped up and was ready to strike back. The guy somehow managed to block the attack, but the force of the blow carried him several meters away, and while he was annoyed by what was happening, the white-haired demon was not going to stop, and a fierce fight began in which there was no winner, but still Han Dae Song was gradually pushed back and he received minor wounds. He realizes that in this state he will not be able to defeat him either in strength or speed, the longer they fight, the worse the condition of the black-haired one. And then, in the process of his reflections, the perfect creature from hell pushes the boy away with his hand for hundreds of meters. A column of thick smoke appeared on the platform and there was obviously someone's figure inside it. Having dissipated, the wounded Han Dae Sung smiles maliciously and holds on to the surd. He understands what a pitiful situation he is in. That even a fake is much better than his real one. He is not particularly happy about it. But this does not negate the fact that he is in any he will kill her today with his own hands. And at the same moment, he uses his trump card, namely a skill called Blood Psyker's Anger. An enraged clone flies at the kid and soon he cuts the guy in half. But not the guy himself, but his afterimage. The boy himself takes the ruler of hell by the head and drives it into the ground, after which he desperately tries to chop it off, but the clone pushes the head away from the cutting attack, after which he breaks out of the trap and prepares to strike back a blow, but first of all. He also decides to use the ability Blood Psyker's Anger. Han Dae Song did not expect such impudence from the clone and continues a desperate battle but soon the ruler of hell turns out to be behind his back and causes serious injury to the boy. At that moment, the cleaning lady started knocking on the toilet door, but the guy was not conscious and did not react to the sound. At the same time, the employee decides to open the locked door with a key. The guy is on the verge of losing and already understands that if he loses now, then everything he has accumulated up to this point will turn into nothing again. Bleeding, he desperately tries to think of a way that will allow him to kill this creature from hell and soon he remembers about his inventory. At this moment, the cleaner is distracted and then she takes out the key and goes to another floor with a colleague. The wounded guy opens the inventory and puts his hand in it in the face of death. Soon he takes out a once useless item that he received for each completed task. It was lying around all this time in the inventory. But now this is exactly what he needs. This is a medicine for restoring the body of a perfect being. It helps to increase endurance by 2% and if everything is really like that, then after drinking 5 such vials he will be able to fight this crazy monster. Approaching the clone tries to strike, but the boy dodges and hits the white-haired man in the face, so much so that he flies away. Finally he is able to fight and without wasting time he decides to increase his endurance 100%. Bouncing off attacks, he drinks the second bottle, and soon also all the others, 
and after the fifth bottle, he continued to block the clone's attacks. But despite all the medications taken, it is still difficult to compete with this monster, and at the moment the ruler of hell grabs a guy in hospital pajamas by the throat. Smiling, the clone was already ready to pierce the defenseless boy, but he called the inventory and with the help of the portal absorbed the enemy sword, and at the same time he pierces his opponent, after which he falls to his knees and begins to gradually disappear. Finally, he completed this dreary task. Now his realization has reached 100% and from now on his body condition in the real world will be returned to its original state. But the guy was surprised, because with the last body, he also returned all the old scars that remind the youngster of hard times in hell. Now he asks the system to return him back to earth, but immediately she notifies the kid about the message she received and invites him to look at it. He agrees without thinking twice and a message is immediately displayed to him saying that hell welcomes its new sovereign namely Han Dae Song. During his absence, the heavenly space will be sealed and the demons of the pantheon will await the arrival of their sovereign. But the kid is doubled by their arrogance, because do they really want him to help them after 80 years of suffering, just because he became their sovereign? In response to this, he puts out his middle finger and sends these greedy bastards far and for a long time, now he again asks the system to let him out of here. Hundreds of demons were watching everything that was happening. After a while, the guy continued to recover in the hospital. From early in the morning he does push-ups on one hand. At this moment the attending physician comes into the ward with his mother, and yet it seems to the man that the guy is awake. The concerned woman asks the doctor again, because earlier he said that her son is not like that, but the doctor says that even now there are no specific symptoms of awakening, but still, it cannot be explained otherwise. The woman is worried about how this could happen to her son, but the doctor says the association will do the rest. Mother and son are driving a taxi, although the guy pretended not to notice anything, worrying about the task, but his mother is hiding something and now the guy is trying to figure out what happened in ten years of his absence. Going into the house, the mother tells the guy to come in and rest, and she will be back soon. And going inside, he sees a girl with money in her hands and asks who is she? At this time, the mother returns and offers the guy to eat, and seeing Jiza, she asks where she has been all this time and why she did not pick up the phone. The mother was very worried about her. But soon after seeing the money in the girl's hands, she understands everything. The daughter steals money from home again, and she, lowering her head down, silently passes. The guy is unpleasantly surprised, because how could he not recognize his own sister? She passing by says that the guy looks quite healthy, at a time when every day in their family was like hell. After these words she leaves home again. At this moment, the same bandits are knocking on the door. They demand that the doors be opened to them otherwise they will take it out. The noise continues to be heard on the street, and hooligans in anger kick the gate of the house, shouting that they know that the woman is at home. Soon the door opens and Han Daesong's younger sister comes out of it. She says with a menacing look that these guys are extremely noisy creatures, then turns around and leaves. But this does not particularly affect them, because now the front door is open, but the bully still drew attention to the attractive little girl. Soon the mother came out to the uninvited guests and apologizes for not being able to call them. It's all because they only managed to get out of the hospital today, and now she is ready to give them money. But men are not attracted to this trifle, and they repel the defenseless girl. Seeing this scene, the ruler of hell flew into a rage and soon his comrade flew to the nagas of the bully. And raising their head, they watched the furious kid. Han Daesong himself wanted to meet these losers, but then they showed up to him themselves it's quite successful. But the bugai does not understand what is the matter. Is it really the same disabled person in a wheelchair standing in front of him? There was still some use from the money that his mother took. But the guy did not listen to the nonsense of the deceased, explains to them that he survived in hell, only because he returned everything to those from whom he got a hundred times more. With these words, he grabbed the man by the face and began to beat him, after which he fell to the ground and grabbing a stool tried to strike back but it was easily punched by the ruler of hell and the big guy once again got in the face, after which he flew to the door. But his friend did not lose his temper and took out a knife, after which he began to provoke the boy and beckon to him, but he was not afraid. The black-haired man calmly approached and grabbed the bloody guy by the hand and asked if the bastard had hit his mother with this hand. After that, I just broke the guy's arm with a grip. The bully promises the guy a fun life in the future, because they are not going to forgive, but Han Dae Song does not really care, because there is one way in such cases, namely to kill witnesses so that there are no traces. But the mother screams at her son to stop, 
she asks him to stop this bloodshed, because it's impossible. At this time, the beaten bandits run away, promising revenge. Soon the two are driving in their black car and discussing what happened, although the guy has increased in size, but it's definitely the same brat. They were interested in how a guy who had been in a coma for ten years could change so quickly. Now they don't know what to do, because their boss demanded to get at least a receipt from a woman, but now they have to come up with a new plan. At this time, the big guy looks out the car window and seeing a familiar face demands to stop the car. Sitting in the yard, his mother decided to tell him what had happened during the whole time he was in a coma. When he first lost consciousness, his mother ran around hundreds of hospitals, not knowing what was wrong with him. Then she sold the house and left their shop. The mother thought that her son would recover quickly, but the reality turned out to be much crueler, and all the money they had quickly ran out. On the recommendation of an acquaintance, she soon paid off a loan in the finance department, but it turned out to be quite difficult to repay the debt. Not only the loan amount itself was growing, but also the interest on it. Then the son decides to find out what about his younger sister? She's still in school, and why does she walk like this? However, his youngest dropped out the year before last, and his mother herself got hurt last year while working in a diner, and then Jisoo volunteered to help with work. She also suffered. Now the girl works at a gas station during the day, and at night she goes to work in a store. But the saddened guy declares that it was necessary to stop the girl because she needs to attend school, the mother tried, but it was unsuccessful. The black-haired man says that it was necessary to leave him, but the mother asked the guy not to say, after all, they are a family. Soon a mobile phone rang on the floor, picking it up. My mother says that these are those people. At the same time Han Dae Song picks up the phone and hears about the abduction of his little sister. At that time, a tied-up girl was sitting in the car, and the big guy demands that the impudent guy run to them in a jump together with the sum of one hundred million otherwise his sister will remain intact. In anger, the boy squeezed the phone, the worried mother asks what happened. However, the guy is in no hurry to tell and announces that he will come soon. But the mother asks the guy not to go if it's something dangerous, because if the boy goes to prison hurting someone, then the woman will not be able to live. Indeed, now he will not be able to kill his enemies in peace, because he is no longer in hell. At this moment, a system appears in front of the guy. The boy asks his mother not to worry and says that nothing like this will happen. The guy gets an award for adaptation, but again he is unhappy, because if they were going to give him something like this, they could have given it out earlier. As a reward, he receives the Poison Skill B class, the Concealment Skill A class, and the Hell Chlorination Skill D class. In addition, he received the Shadow Caster Skill. At this time, the guys bring the kidnapped girl into the building, but the boy with a broken arm is worried that the black hair type may come to them. But the big guy calms his friend down, because even if this bastard comes, they have a hostage. At that moment, the light started flashing in the elevator, and the bully did not understand what was going on until a dark figure began to appear out of the void behind his back. Frightened, the bully jumped away from the creepy silhouette and screamed what the fuck is this? But this is exactly what the fat man asked. The Lord of Hell came as he asked. Out of the offered rewards in the system, the guy decided to try out the Shadow Conjurer skill initially. Tearing off the sleeve, which was soaked in the blood of the villain, the guy threw it to his new servants and asked them to find the bastard by blood, after which he demanded to open the way to him, and at the same moment appeared in their elevator. The frightened man attacked the boy, but it was a huge mistake, in a second he was already knocked out. And of the kidnappers, only the bully remained, and then he asked the question, is the boy awakened? But the guy hears about this term for the first time and asks what it is. Soon the elevator opens and the bully tries to warn his comrades that their guest was awakened and orders them to fly at him altogether. Without having time to say more, he is mercilessly knocked out. And a crowd of robbers pounces on a black-haired guy in a hood, but he is not afraid of this. The light blinks in the room again and striking the first blow, instead of the boy, he strikes his shadow. The monster himself was already behind the poor guy, after which he strikes a powerful blow. The same fate awaited the others. Soon the corridor turned red and only one king of hell remained standing in the room. After that, he approached his tied-up sister and asked if she was okay. Having untied her, he ordered her to go home, and he himself promises to come to her a little later. The nurse looked at his back in surprise and saw all the horror that had happened when the light turned on again in the corridor. The guy himself headed up the stairs, where he soon met a new pack of fleas. They looked at the impudent man and asked if it seemed to them. However, the guy said that these devils only know how to talk they are annoying. 
Soon a window breaks in the building, the phone rings in a light haze, and it is this fact that the man is annoyed, because he ordered not to disturb him while he is steaming in the sauna. But on the phone, his wards ask the boss to come to the office urgently, because they have big problems. But the tattooed man is only more angry about this. Is he really their errand dog? The wards still ask the boss to come as soon as possible, because the matter is very urgent. Having said something about the monster, the connection was cut off. Out of rage, the man crushed the red phone in his mighty hands. Meanwhile, all the corridors as one were filled with bloody bodies and the ruler of hell was standing over his next victim. The bald bandit cracked with fear and desperately asked not to approach the guy, when suddenly the wall collapsed, and a bully in a suit came out of it and grabbed the guy by the head, after which he drove the guy into the concrete. The boss was incredibly furious with the fact that some brat had trashed his office and all the staff. But the black-haired guy was now interested in something else, because if you think about it, either his mother nor Jisoo were surprised when he used his powers, apparently such types can live here without problems, he didn't notice it at all while he was getting used to the world. In the end, black hands reached out to the big man, and he jumped back in surprise, noticing that the kid was very clever. Then Han Dae Song decides to find out, this man in front of him is also something like awakened, but the proud villain declares that it's too late to regret it, because now he's going to send a young boy to hell. But these words only angered the black-haired man, the bully strained all his muscles and his things were torn into small shreds. But this did not surprise the boy in the hood and hitting only once, he sent the proud man into free flight. Soon he was imprinted into the wall. The boss of such a large group could not accept such a quick defeat, but he angered Han Dae Song in vain, and he began to ask the impudent man in a peculiar way, but does he know something about hell? His family suffered a lot during his absence and the man is clearly guilty of this. With tears in his eyes, the big guy asks to stop the young man and save his life. In return, he offers money, everything he has. Then the kid asks where they are. And the bully points with his finger that the money is in that office, namely in the safe. After a short thought, Han Dae Song decides since the man himself so politely asks to take his money, it's hard to refuse. Then the beaten boss runs away from the crime scene but the remaining bald man will not go unpunished, after which a scream was heard in the building. The man in tattoos ran to his car and in anger he cursed this bald dog, and he also promised himself to kill the guy, as well as his whole family. But the king of hell forgot something, namely, he would ask the code from the safe, from the dog of the fake. After that, the man took the shadow in his arms and a scream was heard in the car. As a result, Han Dae Song received more than 500 million won, now he can afford several luxury apartments in Seoul. Soon the black-haired man decided to go to the store, there he was presented with a new model of a folding phone, which costs about 3 million won. Also the guy is interested in a pink phone and they hurry to tell him about this new model for girls, it also costs about 2 million won. The seller, seeing that the client is a little doubtful, offers to take the phone in installments, but he demands that both be folded. The bespectacled one was shocked because today he collected a huge jackpot. Soon Han Dae Song returned home and put a bag of gifts on the table, after which his mother knocked on the door and called him to eat, but he says that he needs to move away and after opening the door, the mother does not watch her son. Evening City, an old friend is already waiting for Han Dae Song at the table, seeing him he is very surprised, because the guy has changed a lot. Soon they continue to have a cultural rest over food and an old friend asks the black-haired man if he has decided what he will do after recovery. However, finishing his glass, he replies that he hasn't thought about it yet. But Chan Ho warns his friend that now they are no longer stupid schoolchildren, but the black-haired one does not listen to his interlocutor, and is crazy about delicious booze. After another drink, he asks Jang Ho how many floors he can buy in a house for 500 million, the same answer is that if the guy has that kind of money, he can find an apartment somewhere outside Seoul. The black-haired man is surprised and then decides to find out how much the apartments themselves cost in Seoul, and his friend in a jacket announces that somewhere around two billion. Hearing this news, Dae Song lowers his head, but Jang Ho tries to cheer up his friend, the world has changed for a long time while he was out. And then the guy tries to raise a sensitive topic, namely, he heard from Desen's mom that he woke up, he wants to know is it true? However, he does not know what to answer, because he will be able to say when he finds out what awakening is. Then the friend realizes all this pun, because the black-haired one could not have found out about the awakened ones since he was out. At the same time, Chang Ho went outside to smoke and began to tell that after the guy lost consciousness, 
various portals began to appear in this world after a while. At first, the authorities ordered to investigate this unusual phenomenon, but soon at one point these strange portals began to crack and unusual monsters began to appear from there. Soon they began to attack people, even the strongest weapons did not take them. So people realized that these creatures were not affected by human weapons, and the number of victims was increasing. At this point, the black-haired man interrupts his friend and clarifies that nothing works at all for monsters. No guns, nothing? The smoker confirms that none of the weapons they are used to does not work on monsters. During these incidents, they realized one thing, namely that only the aura weapon acts on monsters, namely weapons made from the biomaterial of the monsters themselves. And such weapons can only be used by the awakened. Such as the black-haired one himself. At this point a smoking friend pointed at Day Song. Soon the kid pulls out his red-hot phone in order to show off to a friend, but he announced that this is far from a new model, and also that this phone can be found for a song at all. Chang Ho was surprised did his old friend spend money on this stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. Another important feature of the Awakened is that they can strengthen their body thanks to aura control, even without using weapons. And the fact that the guy recovered so quickly, and they also say that he beat up the goons recently, gives the feeling that the boy is one of the Awakened ones. But he turns his head and decides to find out if they give money at least if they become awakened? But Jang Ho is disappointed in his friend at the end. He seriously doesn't even know that. At this moment, a shelf forms in space and a red portal opens from which a crowd of monsters breaks out. The street was filled with monsters. Frightened people could not even stir. But soon the leader of the monsters gives a signal to his subordinates. And they begin to attack. At the same time, people began to scatter in different directions. The worried Chang Ho does not understand why the portal would open right now. The ruler of hell himself notices that these freaks are different from those he met in hell. After that, he kicks the tile, breaking it and takes out the first stone he finds, after which he decides to compete with monsters and throws a piece of tile at the monster with a swing. But it had no effect, it felt like a barrier was erected around the monster. But such an act only angered the monster. Chang Ho once again hurries to explain to his friend that such things will not work on them. But the black-haired man has already realized this himself. Soon, a furious monster is heading to a couple of friends and swings his baton to finish off two standing idiots. Chan Ho squeezed his eyes and covered his head with his hand. Now he has to wait for his death. But soon blood gushed out on him and opening his eyes, he saw how Dae Song coped with a terrifying monster with his bare hands and this plunged him into a stupor. Because this can't be. Soon another bunch of monsters headed for the king of hell. But they also failed. In a split second the monsters were deprived of their heads. Chan Ho could only stay and watch on the sidelines. Did his friend become an awakened above B class? Soon he comes to his senses and realizes that there is no time for these reflections now. Soon ordinary citizens were surrounded by bloodthirsty monsters. But Chan Ho tries to take control of the frightened crowd and advises citizens to follow him because he knows a safe way. However, the monster jumped in front of the people and thereby blocked the way for retreat. Now the people did not know what to do and panic reigned around. The helpless people were attacked by true monsters and in the face of death, the tearful baby was calling her mother for all her strength. The green thug strikes, but the guy manages to save the defenseless girl. After that, a black-haired man appears and breaks the monster's skull. Chan Ho is very happy about the appearance of his friend, because he is in time. After exchanging a couple of words, Desen recommends that the guy leave this dangerous place together with people. Everything that was happening on the evening street was filmed by the owner of the butcher shop on the phone. The audience was delighted with this live broadcast, because an unknown school bar loan dealt with terrible monsters. Under the ardent messages of his subscribers, the operator comments on what is happening in every possible way and at the moment the guy is in a dangerous situation, because he is surrounded by a crowd of angry monsters. A concerned store employee shouts to the black-haired man trying to warn him about the danger but it's too late the boy is overtaken by a serious blow, and he flies into the nearest car. Watching this show, the audience is disappointed. Is their main character dead? At this time, the citizens under the leadership of Chang Hyun went down into the sewer and are heading through the tunnel to a safe place. There, the terrified baby reunites with her mother. The wounded guy in the suit is happy because everything is fine. However, Jang Hyun is asked if he will come back to help his friend and he wonders. At the same time, a monster approaches the weakened black-haired boy. The store employee continues to broadcast live from a hot spot. But the situation is tense, and he and the audience are worried about the fate of the youngster. 
and now a terrible monster swings in order to finish off its victim. The operator closes his eyes, because he cannot look at such terrifying things. At this moment, a fatal blow is heard, but instead of paving the boy's head, the monster broke a harmless car. The youngster himself at this time was killing relatives of a creepy monster behind his back. The operator rejoices, because the black-haired hero survived and despite his injuries, he fights as if nothing had happened, but for the ruler of hell this is just a warm-up. Now he's going to kill them all in turn painlessly. At this time, the comments of the stream were filled with requests that the fight be filmed closer, but the employee is not going to die because of the live broadcast. At the same time, he receives a donation from the viewer in the amount of 5 million won, and in the message the subscriber said that he would throw off another 5 million if the operator took off closer. This huge sum hit the kid in the head, but despite the money, he does not know how to get closer safely. At this moment, Han Dae Song blows off the head of another monster with his bare hands. Soon, the guy in the apron began to receive more and more donations with the request to remove the face of the young hero or to find out his personal information. If the operator succeeds in at least one of these points, then they promise to fill him with donations. But despite numerous donations, the guy resists and refuses to risk his life. At this moment, 20 million comes to him with the same request and inspires the youngster very much. In one of the skyscrapers there is a live broadcast of this stream. Influential people are watching him and they persistently decided to take the guy under their wing and therefore tried to get any information about him. And while they are trying to stir up the operator to show the guy's face, their people have already been sent to the scene. The black-haired man crushed the head of another monster, and now the freaks finally experience fear. But the leader of the monsters splits the skull of a pathetic coward, thus showing that this will be the case with everyone who retreats. At that moment, the cameraman had already gotten closer and hid behind the first car and continued filming. However, suddenly he was scared by Chan Ho called from the side. Because of such a surprise, the boy dropped the camera with the microphone from his hands. At this moment, the audience began to pray for his deceased soul, because they did not know what had happened. But now it's not up to that. The man in the suit is trying to take the madman to a safe place. But he was reaching for his lost phone with all his might and soon, he began to pay for his money. At this moment, one of the monsters turns out to be in front of the guys. He breaks the electronics and makes himself felt but the guy in the apron has already started a panic attack. Chan Ho is trying his best to bring them to their senses, but to no avail, and now a deadly threat is hanging over them, but the monster suddenly loses its head and falls to the ground, they were saved again by a black-haired boy. Temporarily hiding in the store, Desen asks why his friend returned, but he justifies his act by saying that he was worried. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter, the king of hell asks the kid to stay alive, and now he needs to go somewhere. Chan Ho says that it will not be difficult, because the clans should arrive at the scene of the tragedy soon. De Song asks again about the clans, but the friend promises to explain everything to him after he returns. After that, the ruler of hell calls the system and opens a portal to the pantheon. Chan Ho himself, opening his mouth, follows his friend with his eyes. He asks himself the question, who did De Song become if he is able to open such portals? Han De Song enters an open portal and complains of pain in his body which is strange because he only knocked over a couple of small fry. At the same time, he demands from the system to show how much magical powers he has left from the previous body. A screen appeared in front of him at the same moment and announced to the impudent man that he had only 10% of the magical powers left from the original. Then everything becomes clear. It wasn't about the weapon at all. He needs to quickly return to full form and with these thoughts he demands from the system the fastest way to raise the level of magical powers. At the same time, the system asks the kid to systematize his diary, and then he will know the time and place of various tasks. And after their fulfillment, he will receive awards. The Lord of Hell does not immediately understand what the hell the diary is. Is this really the diary he wrote every day in hell? He wrote it so as not to go completely crazy in that damned place. The system again offers to systematize the diary and Destin agrees without a second's hesitation. At the same time a red-bound notebook appears in front of him. The system begins to systematize the manuscripts and at the same time a demonic force breaks out of the diary and launching the seal before the eyes of the youngster, the past days fly by. After that, the diary lights up and the system announces the completion of printing. At the same time Desen wants to immediately proceed to obtaining magical power and proceeds to the eleventh page in the manuscript, titled In the Forest at the Predator. The system accepted the request and the pantheon began to change instantly. 
Meanwhile, the guys left in the store climb the stairs and the greedy operator realizes that the guy in the suit is a friend of that Kurt youngster. He decides to ask where his friend has gone. Chan Ho immediately understood what was going on and, looking at the survivor with a judgmental look, asked if he had been offered money for revealing his identity. The impudent man could not even answer this. When suddenly a strange sound was heard on the landing, after that Chan Ho ordered the boy to go ahead and keep quiet, because there could be surviving creatures on the roof. After that, the business guy received a notification. Taking out his mobile phone, he saw a message from the leader of the clan Seoul. The main one's name is Huang Junyan. He reports that those responsible for the evacuation are late, referring to the fact that it's the weekend, which is why Jang Ho should also leave there as soon as possible. After reading this sad news, the guy mentally asks Desen to come back soon. Desen himself was in the Pantheon at that time. The system notified him that the Predator's Forest, recorded on the 16th page of the diary, was restored, but three-dimensional seals prevent reproducing the picture. Near the youngster, a window was lit notifying about the upcoming task, namely, he will have to destroy the celestial being who captured the predator's forest, the time to complete is one hour, and as a reward he will receive 30% of magical powers. The celestial being discovered the interventionist, and was going to destroy him immediately by firing a powerful laser from his eye. The black-haired man easily dodged such a predictable attack, after which he turned around and a celestial resident appeared in front of his face. The creature makes its second attack and, having missed, digs its hand into the ground, but Dae Song does not have time to catch up and he is going to finish with the monster quickly. He deals a crushing blow to the creature, after which his face cracks and he falls to the ground with a crash. The Lord of Hell successfully lands on the surface, but it's not over yet. The monster lengthens his fingers and continues to step on the kid, but it starts to bother him, and he is going to overcome this obstacle. And having rounded these steel bars, he delivers a fatal blow to the torso of the monster, from which he falls apart. This bug is not enough for him, and he is going to continue further, but turning around, he notices a completely whole red core, and this promises big trouble. But more on that a little later, at this time the events continue in the butcher shop. Chang Ho carefully looks out of the door, and when they go out on the roof, they see corpses, it's terrible, but there's no way to help them. After examining the surface more carefully, they notice a man who has survived, but he is also in a very sad state. The guys immediately run up to him and Chan Ho tries to reach the victim, but he is in a state of shock and mutters some incomprehensible words. At the same time the guy in the suit asks what the man wanted to say and from his bloody mouth one word was heard run. At that moment, terror permeated Chan Ho's body and a huge monster appeared before him, thirsting for fresh blood. But the operator did not notice anything like that and suggests moving the victim to a safe place faster but the wary Chan Ho says it's too late, and also asks the boy not to move without a voice command. But the careless guy does not understand what is the matter and turning his head another ninety degrees, he abruptly began to realize his situation, because there is a terrifying monster above them. The guy in the suit is trying to reach the store employee, because if he does not come to his senses, they will quickly die here, so the youngster should quickly run to the door on command. At this moment, the monster begins to scream furiously and jumps on the survivors. At the same time Chan Ho gives a voice command. At this time the forest of the predator. A strange energy emanated from the mysterious red ball and the black-haired man did not understand what kind of crap it was. At the same time, the core announced the beginning of rebirth and the remnants of the restoring monster took off. Desen immediately rushed to the ball and struck it with a powerful blow, but it did not have any effect. Therefore, the ruler of hell jumped on the old object and began to destroy it with all his might. Soon small cracks appeared on the core, but despite this, the rebirth of the celestial dweller continued. Day Sun was making punches without stopping and the ball began to disperse at the seams. But this is already pretty tired of the kid and he was going to finish it with a final blow. But swinging his arm was shot with a laser and turning around he saw more of the same creatures. Suddenly, they bowed their heads, after which they launched a massive attack on the boy who took off from the spot into the air, thereby grandly dodging the withering attack. After landing, his deeds were terrible, because the percentage of the monster's rebirth reached 95%. Then the angry kid quickly rushed to the core and punched through it. The light from the shattering core illuminated the monsters, Desen flew back to earth and even though he defeated one monster, but this way he could not finish this fight, so he had to find another way out of this situation. After a short thought, he decides to try to look for the answer in his memory. Clutching his head, 
he realizes that his head is a complete mess and it's terribly unpleasant. But suddenly he remembered and now he knows how to destroy these bugs. At this time, the guys are running with all their strength to the door, and the monster in the air is ready to deliver a crushing blow. Landing he makes a huge crack in the concrete, but he missed his main goal and realizing this, he rushed after the guys in a rage. But they already managed to run into the building and the monster with his huge the hand is not able to reach them. They narrowly escape their deaths. The monster pulls his huge hand out of the doorway, leaving a mark on the floor. Having calmed down, Chang Ho suggests going down. At this time, Dae Song jumps from the heavenly inhabitants and dodges their attacks in every possible way, just a little more turning around and he will be able to do what he has planned. The guy jumps away from the fog and running away at a sufficient distance from his pursuers realizes that he has reached the right point. Meanwhile the heavenly inhabitants have already got to the right distance and have started their attack again. But it's too late, and Destin politely says goodbye to the heavenly creatures, because they are in the forest with the predator. At this moment, a huge monster bursts out of the ground and swallows these monsters in a moment. The boy is surprised that the swamp whale still has the same appetite, and now these creatures will not be reborn, because this whale will digest anything. The system lights up and congratulates on the successful completion of the task, as well as warns about Han Daesong's physical reboot. Now he notices that he has really become stronger and he is also given a bonus for completing the mission, namely the judge's dagger. This is quite a nice gift for a youngster, the description of the dagger says that it can be controlled at a distance of a hundred meters. And also, the stronger the owner, the stronger the weapon becomes. The black-haired man decides to use this wonderful ability for testing and throwing the dagger flew a short distance, and returned it back. Now he has to go back, he opens the portal and calmly returns to earth. At the moment, the news is broadcasting about the recent opening of the gate near Nangikdan. The area has become chaotic. The professor criticizes the association of hunters, because the affected area is under their jurisdiction. A man does not understand how people can trust people who are slow with such catastrophes. Besides, they allow themselves a weekend in such a difficult hour. Portals in this world are opened periodically, which means that hunters should be on the alert on any weekend or holiday, and this case should show all their irresponsibility. At this time, a white car is driving along the road and an irritated man is watching this broadcast and criticizing him in every possible way, because hunters from the association cannot receive as much as members of clans. In addition, he claims that he is not a clairvoyant and cannot know about the appearance of the next gate, even with the help of special equipment. The boss is trying to calm down his ward, because he, as a leader, will definitely be fired if they fail. Suddenly, an urgent announcement is made from the same broadcast. They received information that a dubious hunter with injuries appeared in the area. This news surprises the guys who are rushing by car to the danger zone. At this time, the operator asks the senior about whether there is no way to get out of here. After all, there are a lot of corpses on the roof. Besides, a creepy monster is wandering nearby. But Chan Ho is also depressed. They have no other choice but to wait for rescuers. At this moment, a lot of noise is heard on the street. The guys do not know what to expect, they are worried about the thought is it really hunters. A powerful explosion is heard in the store, the frightened guys hid behind the table, apparently they are monsters. Raising their heads, they saw an angry Daesun, who had killed another monster, because he was terribly hungry. Chan Ho is surprised how his friend ended up here. But Desun kept silent and in response he wrinkled up a lot. At the same time the guy in the suit asked if the black-haired man had been wounded. But even on this... Dessen kept silent and turned to the store employee with a request. He demands that he turn on the fire and fry some meat, because the guy is so hungry that he is ready to eat an elephant. The guys were surprised by such a strange request. Is he really going to eat quietly in such a place? Soon, Daesong picks up a fried piece of meat with the monster's blood and begins to eat. In response to this sight, those present began to vomit. Soon a man in uniform came to the door of the store and asked if the survivors were okay. The former operator enthusiastically jumps up from his seat. He is insanely happy because they are saved and will live. Running up to the military man, the worker thanks him with all his might. But the guy in uniform himself pays attention to the black-haired man who is quietly eating on the sidelines. But then Jang Ho jumps out, who salutes and thanks the military for the work done in such a deep night, and also hurries to explain that the guy at the table is slightly out of his mind and behaves like that because of shock. Daesong doesn't understand what's going on, 
but Jang Ho continues to prevent him from eating and for some reason began to carry all sorts of nonsense about the fact that the black-haired man should be shown to a doctor. To which the soldier replied that the survivors are not allowed to leave the place of the incident yet. At the same time the guy in the suit pulls out an ID card from his pocket, which says that he is the head of the first team from the Soul Clan. At the same time, the soldier awkwardly scratched his head. He did not expect to see his colleague here and offered to take them from here to a safe place. At this time, on the street, the rest of the soldiers were examining the place of the incident, and the pumped-up guy turned away from the numerous corpses and began to burp. The manager is outraged by the behavior of his employee, because now is not the time for this and orders him to check the survivors as soon as possible. After that, the guy apologizes to his boss and goes to the nearest military man, after which he asks to go inside with him, because he is a hunter from the association. Meanwhile, the leader was lost in thought, because what kind of strange hunter could do such a thing with monsters? Judging by the remains of those killed, he is stronger and tougher than monsters. At this time, two friends took a look at the places of events in Chang Ho's car. The guy behind the wheel offers Dae Song to spend the night with him. However, the black-haired man immediately refuses, because his relatives will worry. But Chang Ho accuses his friend of short-sightedness, because at the moment everyone will want to catch him, so he will call his mom and warn him that he will not be home. The ruler of hell went into the apartment of his old friend. The guy takes off his business suit and sends the black-haired man to the shower first, and at this time he promises to order something to eat. Soon coming out of the shower stall, the guy observes a fully set table. He is pleasantly surprised. But why is it suddenly such generosity? In response to this, Chan Ho states that the black-haired man was interrupted when he was eating meat, so now he is eating away. De Song mentions their recent conversation. Namely that his friend said that if you become hunters, you can earn a lot of money. And Chan Ho confirms the above, because now is such a time the world needs heroes. Chan Ho wonders if his friend has decided to become a hunter? The black-haired man, chewing meat, agrees the guy is pleasantly surprised, because this is a great solution. If Desen goes to the association and shows his abilities, he will definitely get level B, and if he tries he can get level A. These words attract the attention of the ruler of hell and he wonders what kind of levels are these. In response, a friend explains to him that this is something like the ranks. If you are at level B, you can join a large clan, well, or become a member of the association. In any of the options they will pay a lot, and if you have a level, so even more. Licking his fingers, the lord of hell asks if there are higher discharges. And Chan Ho happily replies there are such people, but there are only five of them and their class is S. These are walking legends, because there are only five of their two million awakened ones. And then the friend laughs maliciously. Is Dae Song thinking of becoming the sixth? But he asks him to stop. There is no need for such ambitions, because it would be great if they took him at least to A. In Korea it is not so easy to get there. And after asking again about his friend's intentions to become a hunter, he promises to help him in this matter, after which they fight for their success. At this time, in another skyscraper at a solid table, a man is having dinner neatly and considering the biography of a mysterious guy. Then he started talking to his subordinate about the crazy debtor. With a dirty knife, he begins to poke at the report and clarify that this unknown person destroyed his entire organization and because of this, they may now find themselves in a difficult position. The head of the internet was interested in the question, why didn't the survivor escape since he was still alive? Why did you come to them and start telling them about it? The frightened bandit declares that he had nowhere else to turn. The head of the Red Horse clan notices that this is quite logical, because the bully could not go to the police. But why is he trembling so much? Is it really because of that bandit nearby? After looking at his past boss, the guy swallowed his saliva. The leader, under the name of Lee Sogu, held the poor bully by the shoulder and he tearfully asked to save his life, but the head calms him down, because he promises to take only money. But the guy can't utter a word and taking the bandit by the head, he says that no matter how they were robbed, they probably had to give up hidden savings, but the bald-headed one doesn't know. He explains that he held the lowest position in the company, so he does not know about this and prays to Soga to believe it. Then he lags behind the guy and says that he believes him. The intimidated bandit thanks him from the bottom of his heart. This is where the head of the Red Horse clan is going to finish and with these words he mercilessly kills the sitting, blood stained the whole room. And even after death, the fountain of blood continued to illuminate this room. But it didn't bother Soga. He went back to the report and examined it carefully, after which he demanded from the servants that they sort out this guy in the photo. The next day, 
the Hunters Association of Korea. Before Dae Song goes inside, Chang Ho explains to his friend that when he comes in, he should tell the employee at the entrance that he has come to receive a certificate of his awakening. After that, they will show and tell him everything, and also the guy in the suit wants the black-haired man to use a polite style of communication, otherwise he looks like a nut when he speaks informally. In response to this, Dae Song just waved his hand nonchalantly. Chan Ho once again shouted to his friend to perform there without amateur performances, and he will also go to work himself and ask to write to him when the results are known. For some reason, the guy in the suit was worried about his friend. Passing by the crowd, the ruler of hell looked around and saw a lot of smoking people who came here on a light, apparently they also came here to get a certificate. Going inside, the black-haired man thought, although Chan Ho promised that he would be able to get a lot of money here, but somehow it's too confusing. Soon he sat in a queue near the examination room, the ninth number is written in his coupon, as it turned out, he is quite a sought-after position, and looking at his uncomplicated tolicnic, he hopes that they will reach his number pretty quickly. At this moment, his attention is attracted by an incoming message, taking out his phone, he sees a notification from his mother. She asks her son when he will return home, and also tells him that her back ached today, and therefore took a day off. Han Dae Song decides not to tell his mother what he is going to do, so he decides to write what is still at a friend's house and promises to take a shower slowly and return home. Soon he receives a reply message saying that Jisoo wanted to have lunch together and therefore went for soup. After reading this message, the guy grinned and decides that he needs to come home as soon as possible. At this moment, a woman with glasses comes out of the office and announces that the next in line is number nine, so he should prepare. Meanwhile, there was a conflict in the office. An elderly man is very indignant, because they tell him that he is not awakened. He claims that he definitely felt it happen to him. In response to this, the employee apologizes, but the device did not recognize anything like this. Then the old man begins to blame this non-working piece of iron for everything that is happening. He is very outraged by the service of the association. Meanwhile, in the corridor, visitors are already beginning to get tired of this scandal, because the man is only delaying the queue but the old man continues to insist that he is awakened, because how else will they explain that he went bald in just one night? Hearing such a thing, the people did not hold back their laughter in the corridor, but Desson was already tired of waiting, because they were waiting for him at home with soup. At this moment, an elderly man announces that he will not go anywhere and will declare himself in this way, but then he is abruptly grabbed by the head and the ruler of hell tries to politely address a respected pensioner. Turning around, the old man went through nine circles of hell and his poor bald head missed it up because of the boy's twisted gaze. In response he could not say a word, but soon declares that this association has worthless equipment, because he is definitely awakened. Daesong asks the staff if this is true, and a man in a suit declares that he is awake and can check the words of an elderly man, after which he approaches the device and puts his hand to the ball, soon the ball lit up green, which means that the man has a level C as it was possible to understand the machine is working correctly. In response to what was happening, the man had no words and the assistant with a malicious grin politely asked to leave the room, while other people standing in line were ready to kill the old man with a look and going outside he shouted that the app art could be wrong and then left. The woman apologized for this incident to the black-haired man and asked him to go to his office. Going inside, the woman turned to her colleague and whispered that it seemed to her that this client would have a fairly high level but he did not take her word seriously and hitting her on the forehead, told her to continue working and not to build eyes. But still one thought did not give her peace of mind, because the guy caused a feeling of fear and if he is awakened, then his level should be exactly above level B. Association of Hunters, Office of the Head of the Branch. The main one is called by phone and asked to urgently go down to the sixth floor to the third ward, but the man does not understand why this is necessary and asks what happened but they don't give him a clear answer and say that he should see it with his own eyes. The man gets into the elevator and wonders if someone of the S level has appeared, but he calms himself with the thought that this is impossible. The gentleman in the suit calms himself with the thought that most likely someone from the visitors is brawling again. But going down to the sixth floor, the man sees a strange picture. The corridor is packed with a crowd of people. There has never been such a thing here before. The head tries to squeeze through and sees an extraordinary sight. The force measuring device was broken. He does not understand what happened. Soon one of his subordinates approaches him and explains the essence of the situation, namely, the black-haired guy put his hand on the device and then for the first time he started flashing different colors, 
soon the ball cracked and an explosion occurred. After opening the door of the room, smoke streamed out of it, and the boy stared out his eyes and stood motionless. Soon one of the workers ran up to him and clarified Dessen's well-being, but he was only covered in sweat and was silent. The manager listened to the situation and suggested that the whole thing was a malfunction of the device, but the employee corrects the boss, because all three could not be faulty. At the moment, the ruler of hell is concerned with only one question, will they demand monetary compensation from him? Soon he decides to clarify with the staff what he should do next, but the distracted manager is in no hurry to announce them, because there is nothing to announce, and it is impossible to allow him to continue testing on machines, they will only break more devices. At the same time, he came up with a great idea and offers Dessen an alternative testing option, since this is the first time they are faced with such a problem, the border guards will conduct testing. The black-haired guy asks again, at the same time they rush to explain to him, at those moments when the device cannot decide, the judge conducts a licensing test and based on the results of this test, they identify the level of the hunter. At the same time, the ruler of hell clarifies whether this test will be honest and then he is told that the assessment will take place according to the established criteria and you don't have to worry about this. At the same time, he has no choice and he agrees to such conditions, after which he says goodbye and leaves. The guy was followed by a glance, and after his figure disappeared around the corner, the assistant turns to the head. She clarifies the information known to her, namely, is it true that the crystal ball reacts to foreign energy in the body of the awakened one? The head confirms the girl's words and then she assumes out loud, is it possible that Han Dae Song's energy has exceeded the scale that the ball can withstand, because it is possible that it was because of this that the ball exploded? But in response to these tales, the guy just laughed, thereby defacing a colleague and the head of the same opinion, because it is impossible that this simpleton was above the S level. But the girl insists on her own and declares that there may be such a possibility, but the red-haired man again bullies the assistant and advises her to at least think before saying such nonsense, because this kid can't be a god. Soon the black-haired man calls up with Chang Ho and his friend can't wait to find out the result, but Dae Song quickly disappoints the guy and declares that the result is not yet known and now he has to go to the border guards. The friend is surprised and does not understand what it is about, did the device fail? But the black-haired man interrupts Chang Ho and says that the car broke down. At the same time, the excited one asks again, did the kid put his hand on the device as ordered and the device broke down? Daesun confirms the words of a friend and he declares that the black-haired man is full of surprises and he is sure that the boy will get a high level as soon as he passes the test. However, the ruler of hell does not care anymore. At the same time Daesun wants to have a good time with him and also promises to inform him about the date of the test, as well as all the information about him. The black-haired man does not listen to the message and hangs up, after which he stops and turns his head. There is a glare on one of the houses under construction, namely a sniper rifle. The girl in the hood examines the victim and does not notice anything outstanding about him, but it does not matter no matter what power he has, one shot will solve everything. The sniper is preparing to pull the trigger, when suddenly the guy looked right into the front sight. The woman is overtaken by panic, did the kid figure her out, however, she calms herself with the thought that this is impossible, she has never been revealed yet and what can we say about the weakling? With these thoughts she starts aiming again, and the guy showed her the place, as if saying aim here. The girl shudders, she does not understand what is going on here and how they managed to reveal her, as well as how the guy hears her voice from such a distance. To begin with, she decides to hide, but abruptly a creepy voice jumps through her head ordering her to shoot and then, frightened, she releases a cartridge that flies straight at the target, but the boy continued to stand motionless. There was a powerful explosion and dense smoke enveloped the street. The smug girl is sure that she hit exactly the target, but soon after looking at the sight she could not believe her eyes, the guy was completely unharmed, but it could not be, because this damage was not ordinary, but was an aura bullet. The mercenary was at a loss, she could not even imagine the existence of such a monster, but soon she realizes that she has lost her cool and first she should escape from the scene of the crime. The girl throws a sniper rifle and hurries to escape but the judge's dagger digs into her shin and the woman falls to the ground. Soon, an enraged ruler of hell appeared out of nowhere behind her. The girl was mumbling in pain, but the boy at that time advised her to aim better, but even so she would not have killed him. At the same time, the girl takes out a hidden pistol and points it at the black-haired man, 
after which she asks where he came from such that he is even able to stand after the aura weapon, to which the boy declares that he is Han Dae Song returned from hell. But the girl refuses to listen to this nonsense and starts shooting at the monster. She releases both of them into him with the words die. Soon she runs out of ammo, but she is still strained and not sure if the target has died. But the malevolent speech of the boy says the opposite. He is more alive than all the living. The mercenary cannot understand what is the matter. She clearly saw him fall, but instead of a lifeless body in the smoke there is a dissipated shadow. Desson grabs the unknown by the throat and forcefully presses her against the concrete column, and soon demonic laughing creatures begin to embrace her. From what she sees, the girl faints and foam begins to come out of her mouth. Song is surprised that he didn't even need to use poison. The woman leaned back herself. Soon he begins to clean up the crime scene and this is a minus of this world, because in hell it didn't care who killed whom, and here it's a whole problem. In the process of stripping, he notices a guitar case and in it he observes his biography, as well as photos of himself and most importantly his relatives. The kid takes one of the cartridges, then throws it at the girl. After that, she opens her eyes and is horrified, because her body is captured by demonic shadows. But the guy calms the girl, because she may die soon. She will be killed if she does not answer his questions, and if she talks nonsense, she will face the same fate. Directing the next cartridge case at her, the ruler of hell asks his first question, namely, he wants to know who sent her. The girl understands that she cannot mention a word about the Red Horse clan, and soon she remembers about the person who has long been listed as a pro-hero. The mercenary pronounces the name Kim Sung-hyun and says that this is the name of the bully that the kid recently robbed. The black-haired man remembers something about it, and the girl realized that she was able to turn the conversation to the channel she needed, decided to pull time and get out of the shackles at the right moment. Now the girl offers to tell the guy where the bully is in exchange for freedom, but at the same moment Desson snaps his fingers and a bullet pierces the girl's shoulder, after which the construction site is filled with a piercing scream. The mercenary pretends to be innocent and does not understand why the guy did this. In response, Desson says that the woman is too kind for such a profession and if she continues to carry such a feeling, there will be no more warnings. Then the black-haired man repeats his question again, but the girl does not even know what to answer. She has already failed her task and even if she gets out of here alive, death is still waiting for her. Because this psycho from the Red Horse clan will definitely kill her, so wherever she goes, the result for her will be the same and if then she decided to act decisively. She grabbed her heart and decided to leave with pride and take the guy with her, but the guy without hesitation tears off her hand. Only she will die here. Half of what the bloody corpse falls to the ground, the guy is disappointed because he did not understand who sent her, and now he needs to clean up the corpse. He did not want to resort to using this ability, but apparently he has no other way out. With these thoughts he uses the skill of reading a diary. The keyword of the search is the memory of the deceased. Soon he found the information he needed and decided to go to the Pantheon. The construction site remained empty, and the corpse was securely hidden by a blue cloth from under which a hand could be seen. Upon entering the site, the system greets Desson and asks what date he would like to visit to which he replies that he needs a 134th page in which it is written about the imprisonment of the soul. This is the main royal weapon, along with the demon king, one of the fifteen main forces of hell. An artifact that connects the owner with the deceased through blood. Initially, he thought that with the help of soul imprisonment, he would be able to fight more comfortably. But he never needed it, because he did not find a suitable opponent in strength to fight with all his might. But this time the situation on Zimla is different and this time, he uses it properly. The guy is transferred to the 134th day of the page to a place called the River of Ghosts. On the other side of this cursed river is the territory of the king. There used to be a boat in this place, and he could safely cross this river. But now there are no boats, or trees here. And to touch this water even for a little bit, means to destroy it with the dead. At this moment, the system is highlighted again. It consists in the destruction of celestial beings capturing the ghost river. The time to complete is 30 minutes. Soon the guy is discovered by flying creatures. He sees such creatures for the first time and the system warns that this is a mechanical structure of celestial inhabitants that acts independently. Soon the spiders fall to the ground and begin their attack. The kid dodges the purple projectile and it hits the stone bliga, and soon completely melts it. Daesun hopes that he will be given at least a boat for the victory of these bugs, after which he takes out his enchanted dagger and starts the fight. He rushes at the spider and calmly cuts it lengthwise and across. 
he is attacked by a crowd of poisonous creatures and spit on him with poisonous bullets. But he does not need to dodge this. None of the attacks reach the target. The barrier worked as it should. But the ruler of hell is too stupid to deal with them alone. And then he decides to finish them off at once. The guy rushes at the cock-footed and in a moment deals with the crowd and pierces the purple sphere. Soon, he completed this mission and also raised his level and the level of the soul's reality. After that, he is given a reward, and the name of it is the patronage of poisonous insects, it reduces the injuries of the owner and carries immunity from the dead, the system offers him to use this item, but warns that after the second use it is possible to use only with support. But Dae Song has no other choice, because the rivers have to be crossed somehow, so he puts on golden armor and swims across the deadly waters. The system reports that the residents of the Pantheon are surprised by Han Dae Song's swimming skills, and they also sincerely regret that they can help in any way. The Land of the King Having come to this side, he notices nothing but emptiness, the king's fortress has also disappeared. Then at this moment comes another impotent message from the inhabitants of the Pantheon, they are also upset by the fact that the fortress has disappeared. Soon he sets foot on the lifeless earth and suddenly a huge obelisk bursts out of it and his name is the Heavenly Obelisk. The system reports that this building is designed by celestial beings and lined with stones, serves as a concentration camp for capturing the ghosts of the dead. After examining the unusual building, the ruler of hell assumes that his next task will begin there, and it is. A screen appears in front of the guy's warning about the high level of complexity of this mission, the goal is the destruction of celestial beings and the time to complete two hours. As a reward, he will be given expansion runes as well as the realization of the soul will reach 100%. At this moment, a warrior in armor appears in front of him, namely the commander of diseases. Previously, he would have been a serious opponent, but when he was in his usual state, they didn't even stand close to him. The ruler of hell shouted at the pathetic idiots and released a fraction of his energy, as the warriors immediately doubted their abilities, but this did not stop their advance. But Desen easily demolished their heads, Apparently the monsters had no base, and for some reason the black-haired one assumes that all this is because of this obelisk. At the same time, the black-haired man decides to use the blood naturalization ability. This skill consumes health points when used and increases the attack power of all states and skills by 300%. The kid rushes at the army of enemies at all times and cuts them out in droves. Soon he strikes a crushing blow and throws back another crowd and thereby kills 130 creatures in total. The system notifies him about this. But this is only the edge of the iceberg. Without thinking twice, he decides that it will be more profitable to attack from the inside, and then he rushes to the entrance to the building and cleans it completely in a moment. Multiple explosions rang out from the building and monsters disappeared around the area, and then the bloodthirsty hero leaves the building. Now he has completed the mission and the level of soul realization has gained 100%, and he also received two runes of expansion. Two bright spheres appeared in front of him, and before using them in the future, he wants to check them. The black-haired man collects two runes and reads the information about the reward. The artifact is called the Imprisonment of the Soul. This is a unique treasure that the king had. The soul of the deceased is mixed with the blood of the owner of the artifact and falls under his control. This artifact has three small features that will allow you to see some of the memories of the object or to revive the imprisoned soul in the form of a soldier of diseases. But the boy is not satisfied with the capacity of the artifact, because he can only imprison twenty souls, well, in principle, since it was given as a reward then in the future it may come in handy. Without thinking twice, the guy activates the artifact and begins collecting, at the same time the system offers Dae Song to engrave expansion runes on the artifact, he agrees and now the number of souls contained has increased, instead of twenty, he can imprison hundreds of souls. Now that the imprisonment of souls has been successfully completed, he has achieved what he wanted and decides to leave the Pantheon, but an extraordinary sphere suddenly appears in front of him. A message from the system comes out, namely, she announces that the inhabitants of hell are shuddering from the outgoing energy of light and now the Pantheon will be careful with Han Dae Song. The guy understands that apparently the inhabitants of the Pantheon are again trying to appease him with words, but they do not wait for his generosity in return. The guy immediately collects the issued treasure and now his hand is soaked with the brightest energy of light. After this procedure, the window appears again, but it turned out to be a useless message again. Now Desen is coming back. The guy found himself at the construction site again, and after examining the room, he was worried about one corpse, where the well-hidden corpse had gone. 
Soon the guy appears on the threshold of his house. His sister has already been waiting for her brother and declares that the soup has already settled and rather calls him to the table. The news broadcasts that the disclosure of portals this time has brought great damage. At this moment the mother turns off the TV and offers to start a family meal. Dayson notes that the world has really changed a lot, because now you can see monsters running around in the news, but the mother didn't even know what to say in response to this. She apologizes for not talking about it earlier, because she was afraid that the guy might fall into a strong shock again. But the guy says that everything is fine and he is very grateful to his mother for keeping him alive in such a world. There was a tense atmosphere at the table and Dessen, in order to soften the situation, asks if his family needs anything by chance, but Gilly laughs from him, as if the guy can afford to buy something. After the meal, the black-haired man calls up with his friend and warns him that he is going to temporarily lay low, but Chang Ho does not understand the reason for this act. Is it really all because the testing will take place somewhere out of access? But the guy explains that he noticed one flea and it disappeared somewhere in the blink of an eye. He is worried about a mysteriously missing corpse. He asks his old friend to look after his family. Now he's going to force the impudence to come to the surface on their own. Meanwhile, the Red Horse clan, one of the henchmen took care of the corpse, but judging by what happened to the B-class mercenary, it becomes clear to the bandits that the boy is not so simple. And now the servant is waiting for the next instruction from his master but the head of the clan asks to leave the Najlets, because the news has reached him that the boy should appear for testing, that's where they will have a chance to deal with him. There is a guy named Jinchel in the capsule and he can't wait for this day. The professor informs the head that the vital signs of the young man are normal and asks permission to start the introduction of the serum. At the same time, the long-haired man warns the guy that it will be unbearably painful and he should grit his teeth, but he knew what he was signing up for with these words. Lee Soga gives the command to start the experiment. Soon 20% of the serum was injected, but the heart rate was still normal. However, at 55% it was clear that the scientists had exceeded the limit, but the head of the clan demands to continue, but the professor is worried that the subject may die. But the man with the scar convinces the scientist otherwise, because he would not have brought the guy here if he could die from such a trifle. Soon the percentage of serum administration reaches 90% and the man was literally turned out. Soon the value reaches 100% the experiment is completed. But the heart rate is at zero, apparently the subject died, but the supervisor interrupts the man in the bathrobe and orders him to be silent. At the same time, at this moment, the first signs of life appeared in a flask filled with water. Looking at the screen, the professor discovered a revival of vital functions. Turning around, he noticed how the guy broke through the glass and got out of the device, but now he is in anticipation of the tenth day. At the same time, the black-haired guy receives a message from Chang Ho, which says that Dae Song will be allowed to use only a shield and a weapon that the association will determine. But this should not bring problems to the ruler of hell, because it will be possible to compensate for the shortcomings of the weapon with his physical strength, but he needs to check something. Dae Song picks up a small cane and strikes himself, as he thought, the shield, unlike weapons, is not visible in the real world, so it can be used all the time. As for the weapon, he decides to change the shape of the blade into a branch in order to use it later. At the same time, a system window appears in front of him, clarifying whether the guy wants to modify the judge's dagger. Soon in his hands, instead of a cold weapon, an ordinary stick appears. After learning that such manipulations are possible, he realizes that he can get his beloved sword, and this is really an idea. Daesong is going to get his blade back. The territory of the Salt King the boy did not expect that he would have to return to this cursed place, and soon he is surrounded by a herd of extraordinary wolves. And then the black-haired man decides to use the blade in a different way. He bleeds himself and uses the imprisonment of the soul. At this moment, a huge monster appeared in front of the boy. But the ruler of hell is not afraid of a lousy dog. Han Daesong takes out the judge's dagger and decides to use it in a different way. The next moment he bleeds himself to use the imprisonment of the soul. At this time, an angry wolf in armor was already standing in front of the guy. But the guy was not confused at all. He was ready to feed this animal, and the fight began. In the next second, Daesong pierced through the belly of the demonic creature, and it soon evaporated. But the bloodshed did not end there. The judge's blade was already flying after its next victim. Soon, the Lord of Hell destroyed thirty-three warriors from the army of Orkiel after which the blade returns to the hand of its owner, and Daesun uses the call of Armiai. While the black-haired man stood motionless, 
the fang creatures were getting closer by the second, suddenly one of the wolves was grabbed by a strange hand, as if consisting of a shadow. And so it was, now the red-eyed beasts had to get together with their demonic copies, but it was an unequal battle. Seeing this eerie sight, the dogs shook in fear, but the shadow wolves only did what they came from underground. And when they all appeared on the scene, Day Song ordered them to attack. His wolves immediately rushed to their pathetic parody. At the same time, the black-haired man, enjoying the spectacle, took out a lighter and lit a cigarette. After taking one puff he choked. After that he wondered why his friend Chang Ho was putting such rubbish in his mouth. At that moment, the red-eyed dog cut the shadow with his mighty paw, but for the shadow, such an attack is a mere trifle. At the same time, the armored wolf knocked down his dark copy and trampled it properly, but Dae Song would not advise underestimating these copies. At that moment, a mad wolf was rushing towards him, but the residual shadow immediately grabbed the creature behind its back. The summoned wolves will be reborn until the stigma is removed from their body. After this phrase, the white-haired dog was pulled back and soon he felt a gentle breath near his neck. Summon beings who are not afraid of death, this is the strongest army on the battlefield. Despite the crushing victory over the wolves, the guy collected only twelve dust stones out of one thousand. The ruler of hell understands that if everything goes on like this, it will take him too much time, and since the level of implementation for this task is only fifty percent, then another one will follow. Realizing this, the guy pushed off from the earth's surface and soared into the air like a rocket, although Day Sun is lazy, but it doesn't cost him anything to kill some bunch of animals in two hours. At this time, the guy was at an impressive distance from the earth. Soon he chose the perfect place to deliver a crushing blow, and rushed there like a burning asteroid. These poor creatures didn't even know what was waiting for them. During the fierce battle, one of Orkiel's army instinctively sensed danger, but it was too late. For a second, a bright flash covered the battlefield, after which a powerful explosion occurred. At this time, in the Soul Clan, a snow-white blade bit into the body of a purple creature. It was a D-rank experimental monster. At the same moment it was gone. A notification was displayed in front of the mysterious female figure that every approved object had been destroyed. This blue-eyed girl is called Shinchon. She is from the Soul Clan. The scratch on her face disappeared on this the hunting simulation was completed. At this moment, the head with glasses turned to his boss for an assessment of this person, to which the head of the Soul Clan under the name Huang Junyan replied that the girl is not bad, but she has a problem, namely, on the battlefield she is loose. The man with glasses asks not to worry about it, because they have another ten days to thoroughly bluff this problem. A black-haired man demands to double the difficulty of training, this should be enough for them to get ahead of a psychopath. At this moment, the brown-haired leader hurries to clarify. By a psychopath does the boss mean Chong Jiknal from the Red Horse Clan? The boss was talking about him. The man is sure that if it wasn't for him, no one would have surpassed the skills of Shinchon. The guy in the jacket confirms the words of his master, reminding that Shinchon has category B, and Jiknal has A. However, Huang Junyan furiously declares that this is not the case. A more important role is played by what tricks the Red Horse Clan will resort to. A man with a tablet in his hands asks the owner if he really thinks that they will do something like this again, because because of that case they banned the recruitment of newcomers for a whole year. However, it is precisely because of this that the boss thinks that being shackled for a whole year, the Red Horse clan can no longer stand to do something even dirtier. Now the bespectacled man understands that this test will become an arena for two subjects, namely Shin Chon and Yung Jikno. The bearded gentleman notices that this is exactly what will happen. At this moment, Desson was already sitting on a mountain of corpses of mediocre creatures. A notification was displayed in front of the ruler of hell telling that the inhabitants of Pandemonium were amazed by the amazing skills of Han Desson, as well as these same residents with great fear expressed their respect to him, and some of the demons applauded standing. The goal was almost reached. The guy collected 999 soul stones out of a thousand. However, Han De Song did not appreciate this flattery. He prefers something more substantial. He sat quietly and smoked on the bodies of the defeated enemies, but one of the dogs was still growling. At the same time, the black-haired man took out his blade and finished the job. It was not worth making noise while the ruler of hell was smoking his cigarette. Now the system hastened to congratulate the guy on completing this task. Now his level of implementation has increased and he has also received the promised reward. Also, bluish balls slowly began to fly out from the bodies of the defeated enemies and they all rushed to their master. This is another ability of Han Dae Song, and it is called Collecting Souls. 
Now a smoking guy can collect a shower at the altar, but the blue-eyed one does not remember that there was any altar here. After that, he stretches out his hand and with the hope that the altar will not have to look for enough souls. Immediately after that, stone columns appear in front of the guy from under the ground. Apparently this time Han Daesong jumped to conclusions and did not even have to look for the altar. After that the black-haired man spat out a bull and a new task appeared before him. Namely, the task for the implementation of the subject, then Tristo is the 37th page called the Sword of Karma, the highest difficulty level. The ruler of hell will have to gather souls at the altar and prove his abilities as a guardian. The time for this task is unlimited. As a reward he will complete the realization of the Sword of Karma. The guy put the collected souls in a vessel, after which something huge soared up right in front of him. The couple coolly looked up and a huge snake appeared in front of him. Its eyes were like fire, but the ruler of hell did not care deeply about such show-offs. This serpent was the guardian of the heavenly world the serpent of Orkiel. To get the thing that the guardian lights up, Daesong needs to answer the question asked by the guardian and get his approval. The ruler of hell already held the blade in his hands. The black-haired man did not expect that he would need to answer just some question. Previously, everything was going so well and he is not happy with some sudden quiz. Looking at the great serpent again, he demands that he ask his question. Then the snake hissed absurdly that was his question. Daesong was furious was he being bullied? At the same moment, he threw his blade into the same fiery eye of the snake and she fell into agony but her emotions cannot be compared with the rage of the Lord of Hell. The guy activated his ability called Naturalization of Blood, it turns the owner into a centaur, and when used, consumes health points and increases all skills and statuses by 300%. The black-haired man made another small wave of his hand and now he grabbed the snake and the second eye. After that, Daesong grabbed his blade and rushed straight to the snake. The guy initially wanted to be nice, but apparently this Nidoskirka saw him as an easy victim. Well, now she has to see his abilities. The guy squeezed his blade with all his strength and plunged it into the head of the nasty snake, after which she screamed furiously, and soon her head exploded, and tons of blood poured out of the decapitated torso like rain. Daesun was upset because of this vile smell of blood. Turning his gaze, he saw an unusual glow from the body of the snake, and then he remembered that these snakes are tenacious as worms. Well, this is not surprising. At the same moment, Tissue began to regenerate from the body and literally a second later the head was in the same place. However, the black-haired man is not facing this for the first time and if he understood correctly, then fire is it. The snake looked at the guy and howled furiously, and poison poured from its mouth. The ruler of hell declared that this could not continue. After that he called her to him. The red-eyed snake rushed to its abuser. She opened her mouth in order to swallow Han Dae Song, but the guy held his hand and restrained the onslaught. After that, Looking into the mouth of the monster, he saw a snow-white flame, as he suspected it was the fire of rebirth. After that, the monster's mouth closed with a pop, the snake was perplexed by what was happening. Immediately, notifications from the residents of Pandemonium began to appear, they were delighted and also one of the demons even bowed his head with his eyes closed. Immediately, the snake sensed something was wrong, suddenly a bright light erupted from its mouth, and this light was Han Dae Song namely the sealed sword that he held in his hand. It was a pity for the black-haired man to waste such a treasure on a guy who didn't even have hands. The ruler of hell has received the sword of karma. At the moment the item will not be able to be used to the full, because the level of realization is only 50%, but the skills peculiar to him at number 123 are assigned to him. The guy was not entirely happy with his level of realization, but it was hard for him to believe that he was fighting someone who could not use the fire of rebirth. At this moment, the monster's mouth was open in front of the guy again, but now with this sword in his hands everything will be different, and it will be more than enough. He waved it to the sky and then made a rough movement that split the monster in two, the parts of the snake passed by the guy with the blade and only the thick of the once breathing snake remained behind him. But Destin was no longer interested in this, he read a pop-up window that congratulated him on the successful completion of the task. Now the Sword of Karma has reached 100% and the process of its implementation has been completed. Immediately, the chains that once enveloped the sword fell off the blade and released its true power. The system window warned the black-haired man that a test was sent to check his rights to the Sword of Karma. He needs to try to withstand the fire of karma for a given time. Having understood this, Han Daesong decided that he must definitely pass this test if he wants to finally master the sword, a test called Sultry Hell. 
He needs to endure the pain of burning for 240 hours. It's only 10 days. This test cannot take his life, but it can bring him excruciating pain. Grabbing the sword, his body was covered in fire. It literally melted, but he didn't have to endure this pain. His skin was already gradually disappearing, and at the same time the ruler of hell turned to his brazen blade with a question. Could he not recognize his real master? But after that the time on the timer did not change. At the same time, Han De Song changed his tone and demanded to remove the timer while he was speaking in a good way, otherwise he would take it to pieces. At the same time, surprisingly, the time on the timer disappeared and the guy deservedly passed this very difficult test. The skin gradually returned to its rightful place and the sword turned to the black-haired guy. He sincerely apologized to his master for not immediately recognizing him. At the same time, Desen said that he was not worried about this. The guy was also glad to meet them. However, he was surprised that the blade did not descend to pandemonium. Pandemonium is the dwelling place of demons, the place where souls who died in hell live is a place of endless non-existence. Before the guys, the notification windows were lit up again, notifying that the demons of pandemonium support him with tears in their eyes, and they also cordially asked him to release them. Suddenly, the sword began to tell its story, from the moment its owner disappeared, the sword only wanted to disappear. Hearing this, Han Daesong asked the blade if he would prize him. However, he hastened to say that everything is not so at all and he will gladly accept any decision of the owner. The only thing he was worried about was what happened after the black-haired man disappeared. The ruler of hell asked about what happened and then the sword continued to tell that once unidentified creatures broke through the boundaries of hell. They quietly made their way to hell because all the demons had lost their powers due to the absence of their master. As a result, the demons were defeated. Not only did the unknown seal the time and space of hell, but they also cast all the demons into pandemonium. The sword had no choice but to be swallowed by the serpent. Watching the demons suffer, he had to lead a meaningless existence because his ego was hurt. But fortunately his master freed him again. Apologizing for the audacity of the sword hurried to find out why his master had returned. However, the black-haired man briefly replied that he needed his help and he would tell about the details later. The blade sincerely regretted that his great master had a situation in which he needed his help. The black-haired man stopped the monologue of his ward and hurried to ask if he knew what it was in front of him. At the same time, looking closer, the blade stated that he also did not know what it was but he felt that a very strange energy emanated from this sphere, exactly the same as that emanated from those unidentified beings who captured hell. The blade does not know what it is, however, it confirms before anything is done, it is necessary to safely check what it is. However, the guy did not hear the exclamations of his blade, who asked not to touch this unknown thing. However, Han Daesong believes the system because it has never failed him yet, and it will be possible to check after he collects this sphere. After that, he squeezed a strange sphere and a system came out in front of him, which announced that the guy already had two keys out of three. Seeing this, the guy realized that with the help of these things he would be able to enter somewhere. Before that, he always returned to reality after completing tasks, but according to the Sword of Karma, there are still a few things that he has to get. Therefore, instead of returning to reality, he declared that he was returning to the Pantheon. At this time in the world, the video with the killing of goblins was scattered everywhere. Well. This was to be expected because it was incredible, the whole office in which Chang Ho worked talked about it. When suddenly a previously familiar leader with glasses approached him, he wanted to talk to the guy alone. The men went to the roof of the building for a smoke break, there the head of the Soul Clan remembers that Chan Ho was kind of at the scene of the incident, and asks the guy if he has something to share. However, Chan Ho himself does not even know what to answer, because if he says that he is a friend of the guy who dealt with the goblins— then he will be forced to hire Han Dae Song at any cost. At the same time, he hesitantly decides to say that if he knew anything, he would immediately report it. At the same time, the bespectacled man said that it was a pity, because they would gladly have tried to recruit him. Jang Ho decides that it would be better if he continued to pretend, he also remembered that there are seven days left before Dae Song's test. The guy, in order to avoid a minute's pause, decides to ask the bespectacled man how Shin Shon is but there was no answer. At the same time, Jang Ho is interested in how nothing happened. The man thinks a little and says that everything is fine, he's just a little worried that she may not be able to cope with such a heavy burden. Seven days before the license test. In the thick of the forest, Shinchon trains hard, 
she has ten minutes left before the end of the simulation, and she also has ten plates left to destroy. At the same moment, it will flare up and cut the slab into pieces, thereby destroying it, immediately the next and the next one arises from the ground. In one of the plates that appeared behind her was a simulation monster of rank D. As soon as he stepped on the ground, he instantly rushed to the woman. The girl was expecting his attack when suddenly she was unexpectedly bitten on the shoulder. It turns out she had to fight with two monsters. Suddenly a strange voice rang out and announced that enough was enough for today. After that, the monster's hand began to disappear, but the girl did not agree, she asked to stop, but despite her requests, the training program was completed and the forest around her evaporated. The head of the Sol Huang Zhenyan clan was looking at her from the window, he asked her to get up and said that they needed to talk. In the medical report, the girl says that she could continue, but the black-bearded man is interested in whether the girl is overdoing it. At the same time, she says and repeats the phrase of the boss go to your goal even if you fall off your feet. However, closing his eyes, Huang Zhenyan declares that he was talking about body training. At the same time, the blue-eyed girl declares that she does not overwork herself in any way, she already knows this. However, the man does not quite agree with this, because does she really know her body better than their system? Immediately on the screen on the left shows the indicators of the usual emotional state of a person, and next to it. Seeing this, Xin Chuyen lowered her gaze. Huang Junyang asks what is it? The system shows that now the danger for the girl is her depressed state. At the same time the blue-eyed one declares that she needs to enter the top five. The man is surprised by this news. Does Xin Chon really want to increase his rank? If she gets the A rank, she will have a lot of new opportunities. But Huang Junyang is not doing all this for this. Clutching a plastic bottle and gritting her teeth, she declares that she wants to kill all the monsters that live on Earth. Five days before the start of license testing. Suddenly an iron door opened, a man with a scar appeared on the threshold, whose name is Li Sogu, he calmly stomps down the corridor and again approaches the next door, after he scans his fingerprint, and another door opens in front of him. Closing his nose, he announced that he did not expect that it was possible to survive in such a place, and he also added that they should change the equipment of the insulator, especially the ventilation system, and the sparkling lamp should also be replaced with these words— he turned to his ward Jinchul, but he was busy with his meal. Apparently, he lives well here and the food tastes good, he should eat more just so the properties of the drug will not bother much, and then he will be able to become the main hero of testing. Three days before the start of license testing. The level of implementation increased upon completion of the next task, and the implementation was completed. Now, the exalted Han Dae Song was ready. The sword turned to its owner with the question, are they really going back now? Wrapped in his robe, he replied that everything was exactly like that. The day of testing, the number of awakened this year has increased by 25%. It is also expected that the level of competitiveness will be increased due to the rapid increase of awakened. Members of the association report that this may change the methods of recognition starting this year. A snow-white car rushes along the road and stops in front of the building. All the reporters were waiting for this moment because this is Lee Sogu the tip of the red horse and his ward. Soon, a reporter from SBC Ode Zekel approached the guy with a scar on his face. She wonders if the person next to him is a newcomer who will represent the red horse clan this time. She is also interested in finding out what the man thinks about what kind of assessment their clan will receive on this test. One man from the crowd shouted out that the red horse clan could not participate in the testing last year because of illegal methods so he asks to share his feelings about introducing a newcomer for the first time in two years. Li Sogu is in no hurry to answer all these annoying questions, however, he did not expect that they would rattle his nerves from the very beginning. After a little thought, he replies that he sincerely regrets the events of two years ago, but the reporter continues to put pressure on the man and declares that regretting those events is not enough. At the same time, Li Sogu takes hold of the man's shoulder and promises him that this year they will honestly pass this test. After that they silently pass on. Testing buildings. In the corridor, Chikmal declares that they should have just given up on that reporter, but the guy with the scar restrains the kid and he soon says with a smile that he was just joking. At the same time, Lee Sogu declares that having fun is good, but you shouldn't overdo it. If everything comes out, they will find themselves in a difficult situation. Behind them is a hefty man in a white outfit who is interested in why the guys may find themselves in difficulty. 
Li Xiegu turns around and greets the head of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan with a casual smile. After that, he is interested in what a man looks like. He reminds him of a gorilla undercover, to which he replies that journalists are very violent, and so he had to do something, he did not want to stand in front of the camera like some. The black-bearded man lifted his hat and looked at the red-haired youth from whom there was an unhealthy aura. Of course she was stable, there was a lot of her, but not too much. This time Lee Sogu did his best to polish everything cleanly that he didn't even find fault. The long-haired man bent over closing the youngster and says that even though the test has not started yet, but the big guy is already looking so intensely. Huang Junyan asks to understand him, because who knows if Sogu can bring an injected person again, who can harm newcomers just like two years ago, the man does not want those events to repeat this year, to which the long-haired man agrees. After this conversation, the two ask for forgiveness and continue on their way. Jinchil furiously declares that this guy looked at them so strangely, is he really a pervert? The guy with the scar understands the feelings of the youngster, but he made a mistake with the choice of the enemy, he should look straight. Jinchil walked past Shinchon, after which, looking after her, the red-haired man recognizes this girl, because she is a diligent newcomer of the Soul Clan, and he does not mind seeing what this little guy is capable of. However, Lee Sugu reminds the kid that it's not important that he became stronger after injection, it's important that that girl from the Soul Clan and that old man put a lot of effort, and the guy agrees with this. That's why he wants to smash them to smithereens all the more. Huang Jun Young watched the mad young man who represented the Red Horse Clan. He did not understand what they were going to do this time, but he reassures himself that this bridal will be able to harm his ward. When suddenly his instincts sounded the alarm, Han Dae Song was walking behind him, looking at him. The alarm sensor was simply broken, but the guy just passed by. Meanwhile, Shin Choyin tried to reach her boss, but he did not hear her and soon he was scared and told the girl to be very careful. However, she was going to be on the lookout with the Red Horse clan anyway, but Huang Junyoung wasn't talking about them, but about that sexy guy over there. At this time, Chang Ho called the black-haired man and sincerely apologized to his friend, because he wanted to personally look at this testing, but he had too many things to do. Dae Song replied that everything was fine. In the corridor, it was announced over the loudspeakers that the hunter license test would begin in 30 minutes, so everyone present is asked to gather in the third testing room after they change into equipment. Chang Ho told his friend that his event was about to start soon, and he also asked him not to stay there and also asked him to call after he finished. Han Dae Song stood in front of the vending machine, detailed instructions for use were written on it, namely, the guy needed to leave his fingerprint and get a box from the lower department. After receiving it he should change clothes. Having looked at the equipment, the ruler of hell was not very pleased. He expected something more, but in the end he took off some piece of cloth. Testing hall number three, there were many newcomers standing in front of the entrance to the hall, and one of them could not believe at all that he would participate in this testing. It can be seen that a lot of calls and the same number of letters justified themselves. He is generally shocked that the association dared to doubt his abilities. With particular anger, he remembers the ill-mannered boy who touched his head, but if he had met him, he would definitely have been in trouble. At this moment, someone firmly takes hold of the old man's skull. Turning around, the man saw an angry Jinchil who demanded that the like it go far away. At this moment, the old man thought about the essence of being and thought that it would probably be better for him to leave. Soon Han Dae Song was walking along the corridor, who still pulled on these rags, when suddenly he saw an old man he knew but now he realized with anticipation that everything was just beginning. The guys gathered in the hall, namely Shinchon, the red-haired Jinchil, and the magnificent Han Dae Song. All the guys joined the ranks. Soon the lamps in the arena were lit, and the participants were illuminated by a bright light. Many people saw such technologies for the first time. The microphone suddenly turned on, and the inspector greeted the newcomers properly. He did not waste time and went straight to the point. The man stated that this time three level portals were organized by responsible persons. In each of the portals, depending on the level, there will be different terrain and tasks. However, many newcomers first heard about such terms as three level, four level portals. One of the boys stretched his hand up and hurried to ask when they would already be given weapons. However, the man with glasses said that this time the test subjects will not be given weapons, and they are also prohibited from carrying anything other than the equipment that they are wearing. No one expected this, because how can they fight without weapons? 
Suddenly, the guys were greeted by artificial intelligence, which will help conduct the test. The topic of their test today is adaptation. They will have to find out how well the examinees will be able to reveal their adaptation skills, whether it's heat or frost. The value of a hunter is not in his equipment, but in the aura inside him this is the skill that appears due to the strength of the body. It is enough for the guys to show how well they adapt and fight. This is the end of the brief introduction. This is the beginning of the opening of the portal. After the portal was ready, the examiner ordered to enter it gradually starting from the back rows, and he also wishes everyone success. First Level Portal, Rainforest Although the test had just begun, the subjects fully appreciated the cruelty of this place. It was so stuffy and hot in the forest that some could not even breathe calmly, and if everything continues like this, they will die from the heat before the test begins. At this time, all the subjects were closely watched from the broadcast room. The brown-haired man declares that only a few will pass this time, while the black-haired one asked if the standards are too high this time, because no one will pass at this rate. However, the guy behind the equipment hastened to reassure his partner saying that this should not happen. The guys on the big screen watched, watched and enjoyed a very big soul, even the huge soul of a minion of the soul clan. At this time, the girl decides to clear her mind so as not to waste energy once again. Watching this spectacle, Huang Jun Young was very happy, he realized once again that his Shin Cho Young was talented. However, the attention in the hall quickly jumped to another participant, although his soul was not as great as that of the last participant, but he is clearly stronger. The observers stressed that this time the Red Horse clan was thoroughly prepared, because their participant inspires great hopes. At this time, Lee Sogu consoled his ego, he suspected that the old man was probably jealous. Looking at Huang Junyan, the guy with the scar noticed that it was impossible to be so surprised by this, but the man seemed dumbfounded. At this time, not a small noise arose in the observation room, because the participant at number 104 is somehow too calm. Looking at the screen, Li Sogu was shocked, he recognized this brat. There was no sweat on the black-haired boy, but no or either, many wondered if the kid had hidden his aura. But if this is really the case, then how can a test subject have a technique of this level? In fact, Han Song drank the item that fell from that lousy snake, and it's called the Guardian's Blood, this item will be valid for another 46 hours. Thanks to this subject, he will feel free regardless of the situation and the place around him, but the ruler of hell hopes that no one will notice this, otherwise he may be excluded. At this time, the rest of the test participants were looking forward to its start, otherwise they would simply die because of the unbearable heat. Suddenly, a pink bracelet lit up on the hands of the guys. Now that all the test subjects have successfully entered the portal, artificial intelligence is in a hurry to announce the first task, namely, the examinees will have to kill twenty orcs in the swamp. After the sing-along about the beginning of the task, Desson rushed forward leaving the losers behind, but the rest of the guys were not going to lose either. Soon one of the participants stumbled and fell. From exhaustion he had double vision, he already hated this jungle with all his heart when suddenly a water source appeared in front of his eyes. The guy couldn't believe his eyes because it really is water, which means that he will live. However, as soon as he touched the liquid with his hand, she grabbed him and pulled him along. It was a monster called the Velcro Worm. It lives in a swampy area and eats hunters by luring them with a substance similar to water. That's how the test subject number 94 dropped out, and emergency help was called to him. Suddenly the monster was torn apart and the defeated guy was enveloped in a protective sphere, it will protect him until the recovery team arrives. At this time, Han Dae Song continued on his way, he realized that apparently the orcs were not in this direction and ran in another direction. At this time, help arrived to the participant number 94. Suddenly one of them received a message on the sensor demanding supervision of the 104th participant under the name Han Dae Song. An unusual figure appeared behind the back of the orc with an axe but the monster instinctively sensed danger. The guy was already choosing the best way to finish off the monster. For example, it's not bad to hit him with this stone, but the orc did not appreciate it and rushed at Han Dae Song. The black-haired man expected about this, so he imperceptibly threw a stone and stood up in a stance. A huge boulder landed in front of the orc's face, after which the ruler of hell dealt a crushing blow to it, causing it to shatter into small pieces. The same stone fragment struck the monster, and wiped it off the face of the earth, and the forest itself suffered. An observer was watching everything that was happening, 
At first the man thought that the management had gone crazy when they ordered him to follow some test subject. However, now he understands that this boy definitely does not go to any comparison even with the newcomers of the largest clans. At the same time, Han De Song realized that killing these orcs one by one was not at all effective, although he did not want to use magic in the first half of the test, but apparently there was no other way. The black-haired man used the summoning of the shadow and ordered the dark servants to find the right targets. At this time, some rustling was heard in the forest. After hearing this, the orcs decided that a field mouse was started somewhere, and for them this is a good dessert. The monsters already wanted to rush to find a small animal. But the elder said that if a guy wants to eat a small animal, then he should have patience for the kala. Suddenly, the orcs felt the shaking and stones rained down on them from above. The orcs turned around and saw a hole in their den, and an unknown person appeared in front of them, and in his hand he had some kind of stick. Still, Han Desen managed to find rats that were buried underground, but the monsters were even a little uncomfortable, because the food came to them by itself. While the Lord of Hell was counting the monsters, they were discussing the mouse in front of them. Desen didn't quite understand why the guys started repeating something about a mouse. At the same time, the sword that took the form of a branch decided to explain to its owner that these lower beings took their king for bait, after that the sword waited for instructions. Han De Song took another look at these funny creatures and then ordered them to be incinerated to the ground. At this time, Shin Chon was running through the forest. She took advantage of the opening of the aura and expanded her search. Soon the radius of her view covered a large area of the forest. However, even so, she was able to detect only one orc. She instantly changed her direction and flew off her feet into a poor tree, after which an orc fell from it. The blue-eyed girl realized that if she continued to take the test at the same speed, it would take her an hour. Meanwhile, the monster jumped to its feet and tore away from the evil mouse, but Shinchon was not going to let go of her prey so easily. She swung and decided to use her fourth move, when suddenly the orc's head was blown off by someone else. The black-haired woman didn't really have time to react, but the mad Jinchil enjoyed the taste of blood. A newcomer from the Red Horse clan appeared in front of the girl. Suddenly the red-haired man decided to get his hair, and he also said that this was the fifth monster on his account. However, the girl stated with dislike that the Red Horse clan, as always, is in its repertoire to covet someone else's. However, the boy only smiled maliciously at this. He said that this was a competition, and there was no framework for yours. Did the girl have less brains than these orcs? However, Shinchon did not just keep silent, and said that the boy was good at talking in the style of his clan. At the same time, Jinchil said that apparently her clan likes to take those who have gone since last year, so the atmosphere between them has reached its peak. The blonde-haired man already wanted to kill her, but he realizes that he cannot act so early, he should wait for at least the second level. Looking at the sour face of the boy, Shinchon exhaled and walked away, when suddenly she turned around and wished the scumbag a good time alone, from this Jinchil was beside himself with rage. The kid couldn't wait for the next level so he decided to swat this fly right now. When suddenly there was a huge explosion in the forest, this event brought the blonde-haired man to his senses and forced him to stop, but he had to understand what kind of mysterious explosion it was and not only him, but also Shin Chon. At this time, the forest continued to blaze. A few minutes before, Han De Song held a twig at arm's length, the disguised sword was waiting for the order of its owner, and he no doubt wished to burn all the enemies thereby the characteristic characteristics of the Sword of Karma were activated, namely, the first skill called Rage was activated. Seeing this, the orcs were at a loss and now they shouted the word Mouse with fright, but this did not save them from imminent death. Everyone in the observation hall was shocked. The test subject number 104 successfully completed the task of the first level, thereby he moves to the next level. The observers could not believe their eyes, because such a thing is impossible, they only recently started the task and some nameless one has already completed it. Now everyone present wants to get information about the 104th issue and obliged to conclude a contract with him. Huang Junyoung expected that this kid would make a noise, but not as much, but Lee Siagu did not appreciate it and hurried to turn away from the screen. Meanwhile, the staff who personally could not evaluate the guy turned pale and the girl began to take out her anger on the guy who did not believe her words that this boy was unusual. However, the man could not do anything, he admitted his mistake and asked to stop beating him. Suddenly, a black-haired man from their company saw something terrible, 
he attracted the attention of his colleagues. A well-known old man appeared on the big screen. A grandfather with a bald spot on his head ran out onto the split battlefield that was left after Han Dae Song and picked up an axe that had fallen from the monsters. Now all he had to do was finish off the wounded orcs. The man even got into the taste, and soon he killed as many as eleven pieces. Grandfather did not regret that he went after this loser at number 104. Looking at this, the guys had no words, because this cowardly grandfather can only cheat. But it didn't matter because the topic of this test was just an adaptation, and the man coped with it perfectly. It was still difficult for the blonde guy to understand how an ordinary person who did not pass the test for the awakened got to this test. At the same time, the girl with glasses happily stated that on that day Mr. Han Dae Song broke a lot of balls. The guy interrupted the woman and decided to find out since when did Han Dae Song become a master? However, he quickly took back his words and asked to continue the story. At the same time the girl explained that rumors had spread that day that someone had broken the balls and their results were not valid. And she also heard that someone filed complaints to the society about this. Most likely because of this the old man was allowed. However, the guy in the red tie brought his colleague to reason and asked her to think before saying such a thing. Although he knows that people from above do their work superficially. Suddenly the boss intervened in their conversation and in a rude voice he apologized for superficially doing his job. The guys immediately bowed to their boss and asked what brought him here. The man said that he himself had put this elderly man on the list of participants. But the black-haired man did not understand why the boss did this. At the same time, the man said that this old man wrapped himself with bombs at night three days ago and tried to enter the portal. Hearing this, the girl was surprised to assume that the old man really decided to do such a terrible thing to himself because he could not become awakened. But the boss explained that this was not the reason. The fact is that several years ago this bald old man lost his family because of the opening of the portal, and thus the man tried to take revenge on the portals. After hearing this, the guys were in a stupor, and they had a minute of silence in the group. Soon the black-haired man made a bold statement that if the boss would give such generous indulgences for every such situation, their evaluation system would collapse. Having heard such bold words from a colleague, the guys moved away from this immortal creature and waited for punishment to befall him. However, the boss felt sorry for the kid and said that he was right and it was impossible to do that. But after the situation with the old man, the boss saw Dessen. For three months he received complaints from the pensioner when suddenly he seemed to have found a diamond. At that moment, some technical problems began to occur in the observation room. Namely, the screen began to lag heavily. In the same building, Lee Soga meets one of his subordinates and declares that now there is a complete madhouse in the observation room. A short-haired man declares that at this rate the 104th participant can quickly jump to the second and third levels. However, the chief with the scar declares that this kid does not overtake their jinchal, just their newcomer gives him a head start so far to look at the endurance of the black-haired out of interest. However, the guy can hardly believe in this handicap, because it is written on the pocket sensor that an ample of change was introduced to the monsters of the second level. At that moment, one of the emergency aid group began to carry out the order, he felt sorry for such a talented novice, but he should not have stood in the way of the red horse with these words. Apmila struck the monster. After that, the forest became restless, seeing this. Dessen assumed that apparently this was the entrance to the portal to the second level. The bloodthirsty Lee Sogu was just waiting for the moment, when this arrogant boy would accidentally die. The flying golem was hit by an ampoule with unknown contents, after which it evolved. It became a floating golem whose feature is the ability to appear out of the fog. The monster became enraged and began to spew flames from his mouth, now the mercenary's mission is completed, he should report this, and he will receive a good reward for such a feat the boy took out his communicator, and it suddenly exploded in his hands. The guy realized with horror that the smoke from the explosion contained a paralyzing poison. The mercenary dropped his weapon and started coughing uncontrollably, but as expected, he could not remain unnoticed. At this time, the ruler of hell got lost in a foggy area with a stick in his hands and his device did not really want to help him with this. Suddenly, Han Daesong stumbled upon a strange corpse. The guy suspects that this was originally intended for him, when suddenly he felt danger from behind. Cones rained down on the ruler of hell. However, he easily beat them all off with the help of his fiery sword of karma. But these projectiles were not simple and an explosion occurred in the forest. 
The guy did not expect such a trick, but he easily withstood such a flame. After seeing such a trick, Destin at first thought that it was the absorption of flame, but soon he came to a different conclusion and decided that he should use the skill he used against the orcs. However, he can't use it yet as it is being recharged and it doesn't look like this red-eyed monster will kindly wait for him. At this moment, the monster decided to launch its attack. The cones again fell towards the guy and he continued to diligently repel them, after which he rushed through. He got tired of playing with nature and decided to first break the base of the monster. The cones changed the route of their flight, but they still could not overtake the youngster. Han De Song overtook the monster and decided to strike him a direct blow, when suddenly he was thrown into the nearest tree, well, into all the rest of the blessed trees. At this time, Jinchul was butchering the last orc, so the examinee at number 14 successfully completed the task of the first level. The blonde-haired man was furious that he had spent so much time because of this type. Suddenly he felt the presence of a stranger behind his back. He caught a thrown object in the air. Inside the white box was an ampoule, a special compass and a note. After reading its contents, Jinchul burned it with his aura. Now he knew that the 104th room was still on the first level. At this time, the stone golem continued to throw cones at the ruler of hell. Dessen flew a few kilometers and got back on his feet now he decided to use the ability the ghost of shadows. He fed the summoned shadow in order to clear the way for him. Now the summoned monsters began to catch flying cones, but this was not enough and Dessen had to defend himself. Now the lord of hell will return this debt with interest. The summoned shadow absorbed the fiery fragments and then disappeared. At this time the monster growled furiously and rushed at the youngster, when suddenly his own shadow came to life and fiery cones appeared from it that were ready to explode. It was a special gift from Han Dae Song. At this time the picture began to appear quietly in the observation hall. They could again observe number 104. Although the picture was restored, however, the audience still could not make out anything on the screen because of the thick fog. They thought it was strange because the zone of the first level is a tropical level and fog should not have appeared on it. But a second later they saw a huge monster. The observers were amazed. Was this monster also included in part of the test? And it was also not clear where the inspectors were looking. The boss, seeing this, became gloomy and the blonde-haired man decided to ask if this was normal. Because no matter how you look at it, this monster is some kind of mutant. Also, the blonde man clarifies, shouldn't they stop this lawlessness? Because the boss has the right to do this as the highest defender. However, the man was in no hurry to do this. The blonde-haired man turned to him and also the second colleague said that the location of the 104th number had been determined and now inspectors were being sent there. So he also asked if they should suspend the test for the 104th. After hearing numerous requests, the boss announced that apparently he had no other choice. The girl who continued to watch the broadcast was stunned, because the black-haired man in whom no one believed was able to fight back and it's just incredible. The shadow surrounded the flying monster and began to return his bombs to him. A column of smoke appeared over the forest, and the observers had no words to characterize this event. The boss had previously thought that it was just a malfunction of the device, but now it became clear that it was impossible to determine its level. Although a man cannot appreciate the boy, but there is clearly something unimaginably strong in him. The girl saw how Han De Song dragged that mutant to earth with every second he becomes more incredible. Suddenly, a colleague approaches the blonde girl and loudly tells her that all these achievements have nothing to do with the test. Therefore, the impudent woman is sure that Zhang Jinchul from the Red Horse clan will get to the second level first. Thus, the atmosphere has heated up between the two girls, they have a black-haired man behind their back who is interested in his master whether he should recall the people they sent to the aid of the 104th number. However, the boss says that it is not worth doing this. He wants the guys to analyze the wounds and make a detailed report on this situation. At this time, Jinchul was running through the forest thicket and looking at his pocket radar. Soon he reached the approximate destination. Judging by the fact that the fog began to dissipate, he realized that everything seemed to have already been decided here. The blonde-haired man decides to get rid of his compass while no one noticed, and now he can run at full power. At this time, Han De Song was pouring his blood into the stone slush to use the soul's imprisonment. After the rite was completed, he decided to summon the commander. Now, a black fog began to appear over the forest. 
The observers looked at this performance with their mouths open, they could not even guess what this black-haired youngster was doing. Soon the defeated monster rose from hell, this event further misled the audience. The flying golem became enraged in front of Han Dae Song, but the guy didn't have time for this, so he asked the monster to bow his head in a good way. And the monster, realizing his possible fate, prostrates himself. After that, the ruler of hell stands on a pile of stones and orders her to run forward. At this time, the narcissistic Jung Jiknal has already reached the portal. He is sure that no one but him will be able to become the first in this test. At the same second, an afterimage of an unknown figure flies past the boy. The blonde youngster did not even have the opportunity to say something. Number 14 was completely stunned, and he could not understand how this jerk had done something so crazy. At this time, Lee Sugu approached the room of observers from which surprised shouts could be heard. Judging therefore the long-haired man assumed that Jinchil had already amazed the audience. However, when he entered the room, he saw the stunned face of a teenager, then the head of the Red Horse clan was greatly fascinated. A little earlier, Han Dae Song climbed on his new subordinate. Together with him he was looking for a way by which he could cut the distance. Soon he decided to clear the way and ordered his pebble to move just forward. After that the black-haired one activated the breath of the ghetto king. With this ability, the ruler of hell burned the floor of the forest, and while the monster was flying, he continued to spam with his skill. The observers were rather surprised because the 104th uses an unknown trick with a call, and he also uses techniques that no one has heard of. At first, people had doubts whether it was possible to do this at all with the help of the aura technique, but the guys decide once the kid comes out, it means it's real, in principle they have nothing to be surprised at in this fairy tale world. For the workers, this test has turned into a reality show, a little more and the guys will start betting on Han Dae Song's victory. Suddenly, there was a crash in the audience, the guys present turned around and saw Lee Soga blushing with anger. The man wanted to make a remark about the behavior of the head of the red horse, but it could become dangerous, so the bodyguard politely asked not to approach an outsider for his own good. Meanwhile, the guy with the scar pulled himself together and asked for forgiveness for his behavior explaining that he was too excited by these unthinkable abilities that were demonstrated on the screen. Huang Jun Young was quietly happy about what was happening, because Lee Soga got what he deserved. Such a weasel like him from the Red Horse could not imagine such a thing in his sleep. The head of the Soul Clan realized that Chon should also arrive at the place soon. At the same time, Jigmal was becoming more and more filled with anger, when suddenly someone's figure appeared behind him, turning around, the blonde-haired man saw Shinchon running. Gritting his teeth, the guy decided that he did not dare to lose to this dog. Meanwhile, Han Dae Song was already standing in front of the snow mountain that was on the second level. The guy was surprised by the imagination of the leaders, because at the last location he was greeted with heat, and now he has to run in the freezer. After looking at his ward, the ruler of hell declared that the pebble could be free at this stage. A previously familiar artificial intelligence appeared from the guy's wristband. He congratulates the 104th number on the fact that he is the first to reach the second level. Hearing this, the black-haired man wonders if it is possible to start the task. At the same time, artificial intelligence stated that everyone would be divided according to their strength by five people, each of whom would start from another place. And the goal of the second level is that the test takers should reach the top of the mountain. After this little excursion, Han Dae Song was wished good luck. Although the ruler of hell could not accurately determine the height, however, he is sure that this mountain is more than five kilometers. The black-haired man continued to climb up the cold rocks. It's quite a simple task, but the ruler of hell was so lazy to do it, and besides, all this time he was surrounded by annoying drones because of which he could not use his trump card. At this time, Jinchil appeared below Dae Song, looking at him, the black-haired man remembered that the awakened Class C and D earn a living working as porters. The blonde-haired man was getting more and more angry, and besides, for some reason everyone has a different starting place, he was extremely dissatisfied with this. Now, he decided not to sit back until he stopped Han Dae Song, he would not calm down. Turning around, the blonde-haired man saw a dark figure in the distance, and the guy realized in anger that it was probably the annoying Shinchon again. But this was far from the case. A half-dead old man appeared on the horizon who almost died from the local cold. After seeing this, Jinchil decided to destroy this fly first. 
the old man slapped himself in the face and decided that he should not even think about death, because he should think about his family, which has disappeared, now he is not cold at all. At the same moment, the old man falls asleep in an avalanche, the cause of which was a merciless boy. After what he had done, the blond-haired man said that this midge does not know its limit at all, so he wishes him a speedy rest. At this time, some problems occurred again in the building of the building, namely, for some reason, the signal from the flying drones, as well as from the rest of the video devices, was lost. Hearing this, Li Siege didn't even twitch, because this is just the beginning, now Zhang Jinchul doesn't dare let him down. At this time, the other participants, after hearing the explanation of their goal, decide that it will be easy, because they are the strongest. When suddenly Jinchul lands on the optimistic boy, the fat man was shocked by what he saw, but he did not have time to blink as he was firmly taken by the head. After the cameras were turned off, the blonde turned into a real monster. The scion of the Red Horse clan was shocked by the effect of the injection of the champion orc, because with its help he will be able to kill all his opponents. Meanwhile, Xin Chuyin was quietly climbing the mountain, when she suddenly discovered that the equipment had started to mess up again, but she still could not understand the reason for what was happening. The ruler of hell also noticed that a strange thing near him was out of order. He is insanely happy about it because now he will be able to move as he pleases. After that, the black-haired man lets go of the ledge he was holding on to and with a smile calls to himself the armor of a ball arc fighter. Suddenly, Xin Chuyin felt a strong surge of energy from below, when suddenly Han Dae Song flew in front of her face on wings. The girl could not even imagine that the 104th number could fly using the aura technique but she did not even guess that this was far from the aura technique. At this time, the mutated Jinchul continued to smash the faces of helpless opponents, sitting on the bald-headed bully turned around and saw the 104th number soaring to the top. The guy in a rage suggested that this scumbag was given an ampoule of a harpy, after which he rushed forward for the 104th. At this time, in the observation room, Huang Junyan demanded that the competition be interrupted, because the safety of the test subjects was always a priority, but the boss asked the gentleman in the white suit to be patient, and the man also promised that they would try to fix all the problems as soon as possible. Hearing this, Li Sogu only laughed and then said that if those who want to become a hunter cannot survive such a small incident, then will they be able to perform their duties properly. After such an audacious statement, the long-haired man turned to the gentleman responsible for the test and asked his opinion about it. The man coughed, but did not give his answer. At the same time Huang Yunghyun suggested with anger in his eyes that Li Sogu was involved in this. However, the guy with the scar didn't even try to hide it, and said that it was better to disqualify weaklings initially, and asked is a newcomer from the Soul Clan so weak? Those present did not even know what to say to this, but Huang Junyun caught fire with anger. At the same time, the insidious Li Sogu advised the man to take a break and retire. At this time, Han Dae Song reached the tip of the icy iceberg and stood in front of the next portal. Now he was ready to go to the final round. While Xin Chon was diligently climbing with a stick, the blonde mutant was climbing like a gorilla. However, we forgot about the strongest participant. The old man miraculously got out of the avalanche that befell him and sobbed, because he won a major victory for himself. He survived and this is already a victory. When suddenly the old man was pierced by cold, now he decided to go back down. Artificial intelligence announced the task of the third level. The guys should get ready for a monster raid. Moving around the field they will fight monsters for which they will be awarded points. To pass this stage they should score a thousand points. Xin Chuyin found herself in a dark cave. So first she decided that she should hold out until her eyes got used to the darkness. When suddenly she heard someone calling her name. There was a mutated Jinchul behind her. He wanted to know with great interest if the girl had seen a flying type here. Realizing that behind her, Zhang Jinchul from the Red Horse Clan, the black-haired young lady realized that the situation was not in her favor. At this moment, the angry kid noticed that the girl somehow came here before him, and this is not very good. Xinchon, after thinking a little, politely asked the guy to get out of here not to annoy her, but Jinchul was not going to let her go so easily. At that moment, the girl relaxed her vigilance and remembered the words of her master that she should be more careful with the guy number 104. Xin Chon admitted that the unknown was faster on the first two levels, 
but on the third the situation could turn around. Suddenly an error appeared on the girl's transmitter informing her that an error of the aura reactor had been noticed. The aura reactor sets and makes stronger the release of aura in an awakened person, it also activates the emergency protection function of the suit. At the moment when the girl dealt with the mistake, her torso was severely injured. S first wanted to deal with the flying bastard, but Shin Chuyin was just unlucky enough to stumble upon the bloodthirsty Jinchul. At this time, the ruler of hell had no problems burning the monsters he caught. Soon he turned to the sword and asked him to finish everything as soon as possible. The next moment, the remaining monsters turned to dust. The black-haired man noticed that it took him too much time for these losers. At that moment, he had already collected 530 points. But it was still not enough. Han Daesong looked around and decided to get rid of what was visible first. At this time, the boss was talking on the phone and was interested in when the video surveillance system would be restored. Li Sogu himself was calmly sitting on a chair and looking at his watch. He was pleased with the result that they mixed different factors in the ample. He even felt a little sorry for this old man in a snow-white suit, because his ward Shin Chon would either die or become disabled. The girl was bleeding and turned to the man and with a question. She was interested in what he decided to do during this ordeal. Zhang Jinchul did not expect that the black-haired girl would withstand such an attack, because she is a fragile girl, but she had protection. At that moment, the red-eyed man tensed, the wounded girl attacked her abuser and punched him right in the head. The blonde guy staggered but withstood this blow, but after that his rage was greatly inflamed. Raising his head, he did not detect his prey, but he does not mind playing catch-up with her. Hiding, Shin Chon hurried to examine her deep wound, she decided to heal it as soon as possible with the help of the aura technique, but she was found. Without thinking twice, the black-haired woman threw her uniform at Jinchul, after which she dealt him a forbidden blow, which we hardly show on YouTube. The man howled in pain, but the cruel girl was not going to stop, after which she punched him in the face from the knee, from which the cape flew off the face of the blonde monster. The guy was trying to recover from his injuries but the black-haired woman was already in full combat readiness. During a powerful punch in the stomach, the girl declared that she was the ace of the Soul Clan, and her name was Shin Chon. From this technique, the guy coughed up blood, after which he flew several meters away and fell with a punctured belly. After looking at the scumbag, Shin Chon said that even monsters are less vile than him. Her supervisor was completely right. After that, the girl spat and walked away from the scene of the crime not for Huang Jinchul educates strong fighters. At this time, the ruler of hell killed even more creatures, but the number of points did not change at the same time he realized that the device was broken. Now Han Song had no idea what to do, for a second he even wanted to go out and ask, but soon came to his senses and went on wandering around the lifeless cave. At this time, the wounded girl was also walking through the cave, and was thinking why he did not see other players when suddenly a lifeless body flew by in addition to her. Turning around, she sensed danger. It was still the same Jinchul. Realizing this, the girl rushed away from this monster. She could not understand the secret of the trick. Shin Chon was sure that she had killed the guy. When suddenly his muscular arm appeared in front of her and knocked her to the ground. Now the monster on steroids decided to take his revenge. He sat on her body and began to strike her in the face nonstop. Poor Shin Cho Young tried to block the attacks, but she could not resist it because the escape route was cut off for her. Soon Jin Chul took her by the hair and lifted her up. He was going to kill this goat in the most painful way. Having imbued his fist with aura, he hit her on the stomach, causing Shin Cho Yun to start coughing up blood. The blonde guy gloatingly ordered the victim to call for help. Suddenly someone would hear her grunting and come to help, although the guy remembered that he had destroyed all the video equipment so the girl had no chance. At that moment, a pair of fingers flew into the guy's smug face, which deprived him of his sight. After that the guy fell screaming to the ground, and Shin Chon tried to move away from her injuries. Soon Zhang Jinchul got up, and the heiress of the Soul Clan could not do anything. In tears she realized that she should leave as soon as possible because the guy would recover quickly. At this moment, the mutant's eyes gradually regenerated, the black-haired woman was trying to make her body move when suddenly she heard an enraged Kainal calling her name. The guy restored his eyesight and picked up the girl again. Because of her, 
The number of monster lives was halved, and he is not able to forgive this, so it's time to kill. Suddenly, someone called the mutant from the side, Han Dae Song, who was wandering around, came across a strange couple and decided to ask what they were doing. Han Dae Song, who was wandering around, came across a strange couple and decided to ask what they were doing. The bloody Jinsho was very happy to see the 104th number after that. He threw the wounded girl away and laughed madly. Soon he came to his senses and greeted Desen with the words that he had been looking for him for a long time, and as a result, the stupid black-haired man stomped here himself. John Jignall was behind the careless youngster and was about to deal him a fatal blow, when suddenly the ruler of hell just walked by. While the blonde could not realize that he missed his target, Desen examined the lying girl. Looking at her, he assumed that she was in real pain. He also noticed that she had recovered a little. It was like some kind of recovery cycle. At this time, the mutant recovered from the shock and was ready to continue to sort things out. Soon he pointed to the guy and said that he seemed to be very talented too. Daesong turned around and hurried to find out who did it. At the same time, the smug Jinchil said that she had confused the coast a little, so he had to process her, and the light-haired one also said that Han Daesong was waiting for the same fate. The black-haired man with a stick in his hands looked at the big guy and said that he meant who broke the thing that counts points. After hearing this, Jinchil only laughed and decided to quickly finish with the 104th number with the help of his skill called Storm Wave. At this time, Han Daesong's bracelet got stuck again. Suddenly the blonde man stopped because he had completely forgotten about protective clothing. If it breaks, then the examinee is covered. At that moment, Han Dae Song decided to introduce his fist more closely to the face of the blonde mutant, from which the fourteenth number flew away a few meters. After Jinchul grabbed his beautiful face and called the black-haired scum, but Han Dae Song did not hear the barking of an ordinary mortal, he used a skill called fire bullets. The mutant was soon surrounded by fire, but he didn't care about such insignificant attempts, when suddenly his pupils shrank from surprise. In front of him stood a real king of hell surrounded by his subordinates. Han Dae Song angrily declared that this dog had awakened his infernal character. At this time, in the building where the testing was carried out, the employee managed to restore communication at the second stage. Then the boss asked what was on the third floor. The blonde girl said that the engineers said they would need another half hour to fix the video connection. After listening to the subordinate, the man orders to send guards to the second level and another squad at the entrance to the third level. The smugly Sogu was quietly enjoying a drink at this time and also advised everyone else to do it, because everyone who is there is a future hunter. Huang Junyoung looked at this snake from the Red Horse clan with contempt, but unfortunately he could not do anything because he had no proof. Suddenly, the door to the observation room opened and a blonde man entered it and addressed his master. He told him that the guards had reported that one dead man had been found and there were also enough wounded at the second floor level. After hearing such information, the man turned pale, but Lee Soga looked at it with a smile. What was happening somehow leaked into the news and the TV was told that there were failures in video playback during testing for hunters and this situation has been going on for the last hour. Jang Ho heard this news, so he decides to go there immediately because his best friend Han Dae Song is taking a test there right now. At this time, the blonde man was running away from the black-haired man in horror. He was sure that the guy at number 104 was a demon in the flesh. Suddenly, the running boy's leg fell off, because of which he could not keep his balance and fell to the ground. The blonde-haired man was shocked by what was happening, because now he had only one life left. However, Dae Song just got into the taste. The blonde guy reminded him of bugs from hell who were constantly reborn. Hearing this, Jinchul screamed in fear. At this time, communication was fully restored in the observation room, after which the guards were ordered to be released. Looking at the screen, Lee Soga turned pale, he did not understand what was happening, poor Jinchul was kneeling in front of the 104th number and desperately begged him for mercy, because he had only one life left. After listening to the desperate boy, Desen realized that they had a serious problem, because he wanted to check whether the guy would live if he was divided in half. After hearing this, Jinchul was depressed because if he was cut at least half, even the properties of the ampoule would not help him recover. Suddenly, the black-haired man noticed that the camera was working again. After seeing this, he decided to ask three questions to the mutant, and if he answered honestly, he would let him go. 
After hearing this, Yung Jiknal couldn't believe his ears. Now he has a chance to survive. Suddenly, Dae Song waved his impeccable weapon, so the wooden twig turned out to be at Jinchil's head. The black-haired man said that if the guy lied to at least one question, he would pierce him. Now the blonde was overtaken by a tremor. First of all, Desen wanted to know only Jiknal was cheating or was there someone else. Watching this, Li Siagu turned pale, and Huang Junyang eagerly wanted to hear the answer from the frightened boy. The blonde was in no hurry to answer this question. At the same time the blue eyed offered to split the guy and see what would happen to him. But soon he decided that it would be even more interesting if the resulting halves were divided again. At the same time, the mutant in despair declared that he was the only one, and it was all his fault. Hearing this, Desen thought. Now the guy regretted what he had done, because from now on he was in full ass. But the ruler of the ghetto did not care. His second question he wanted to find out who made the blonde do it. The guy realized that he could not lie, so he decided to at least get out of here alive, after which he shouted that all this was the plan of the head of the Red Horse clan, and he was only following his orders as a subordinate. Desen now understood who he was dealing with. At this time, in the observation hall, everyone present began to squint at Lee Soga, because if the guy is number fourteen, then the long-haired one is the source of all the troubles. Now the head of the Red Horse clan was in a terrible situation because of the filthy Jinchul, the long-haired man turned around and told his guards that this guy was an abnormal psycho who had started this mess himself, and was now trying to hang his sins on him, so he demands that they immediately spoil him and bring him here. Suddenly, a voice interrupted the shouts of Lee Sogu. The chief said that all proceedings would take place during the investigation of the hunter's inspection. The hunter's inspection is a state body responsible for investigating illegal actions of hunters. Now the green-eyed man realized that he would not be able to get away with this situation from here, so he only had to agree and he said that he would arrive at the inspection at the appointed time. Those present were surprised because the well-known Lee Sogu lowered his head. Soon the disgruntled man left the building. He was very annoyed that Chong Jiknal, whom he had raised, thanked him in this way. For this he was going to feed the boy to the orcs. Soon one of the entourage turned to his master with the question, Was there a need to bow his head? At the same time, Li Siagu stopped and called the black-haired dumbass. Because if he had said at least something superfluous there, Huang Junyong would have been beside himself with happiness. At this time, in the same observation hall, Huang Junyong stood still and exuded his murderous aru. The boss approached the man in the suit and thanked him for being able to show such generous patience and endurance. But the bearded man grabbed his hat and said that he was not doing it for them. Then he turned around and hurried out of the audience, because this test is a real dump. The person in charge of the exam grabbed his phone and ordered all the guards to enter the testing area and stop it, and he also demanded that they activate all protective suits and collect the wounded. At this time, Han Song decided to ask his third question. Zhang Jinchul shuddered when suddenly the black-haired man asked if the guy had another life. The blonde-haired man looked at the demon with horror and asked what does this mean? The guy was in a very difficult position because if he lied, then the 104th number would divide him in half. But if he said that he still had one life left, he would still be divided in half so that he would not say the result would be one. Suddenly, an artificial assistant appeared in front of the guys who hurried to congratulate Han Dae Song on winning the competition, because he successfully took first place. At this the spirit thanked the guy for participating and announced that the test was over. The guy did not expect that it would be so sudden, but the artificial intelligence declared that the guy is a worthy hunter of class S. Hearing this, Jinchil smiled, because right now he has the perfect chance to escape, when suddenly he split into halves. Desen knew that the guy had one life left, and he was not going to tolerate deception, after which he looked back at the wounded girl. At this time, the rescue team was rushing to the gate that leads to the third level of the exam. Soon they found Shinchon and hurried to provide her with the necessary medical assistance. People who watched the broadcast of the test were excited, because the nameless Han Dae Song became the hero of this test. Their comments make it clear that if a hunter is hostile to another hunter, then he can be killed. After reading such comments, the man slammed his laptop, he is the head of which is called Park Chong Ho. Soon a black-haired girl approached Storic and announced that representatives of ten clans had already arrived. Every day these people come to the association, and the old man is very amazed by this. 
However, the girl does not see anything surprising in this, because Han Dae Song has already shown an S-level class at the first level. At the same time, Park Chong Ho notices that this boy is the first such monster of the half Li Chansik. Soon the man pokes his hand into the biography of the young hunter and demands that the girl definitely bring him to their company. More and more reporters gathered in the lobby. Many employees discuss the events that took place during this testing. Suddenly, an artificial intelligence appeared on the screen in front of a gathering of people who helped to conduct testing and announced that due to unforeseen circumstances, the selection criteria had changed. The main selection criterion was passing the first level. Therefore, the list of those who pass will be announced in accordance with their places. Many were surprised with this too low criterion, because if they are judged only by the highest level, it is difficult to imagine how serious the incident was. After that, an image with the leader of today's competition, Han Dae Song, appeared on the screen. He was assigned the rank of A. At this time, Chang Ho was walking down the corridor and talking on the phone with his friend. He was in a hurry to find out where he was. However, he was very surprised when he said that he was in the Class S recreation room. Chang Ho, who missed such loud news, did not know what his old friend could lose in such an elite room. At this time, the ruler of hell was sitting on an innovative massage chair and getting high. Soon an excited Chan Ho burst into the room and hurried to find out what had happened here. But Dae Song replied that he did not know, just the secretary of the association told him to rest here. Hearing this, the guy in the suit could not believe his words, so that the secretary of the association herself, at the same time the ruler of hell, drinking his codial, said that people say that he became a class A hunter with the potential for Class S. The guy was shocked to hear such amazing news. He was happy to congratulate his friend on this event and also told Dae Song that now he would be able to build a house for his friend that everyone was crazy outside because of his potential. Everything was a mess in the hall. Everyone wanted to interview the young the hero, as well as to conclude a contract with him. Suddenly, the elevator descended to the first floor. All those present turned to face the rising legend after which they immediately began to photograph him. At that moment the old man stopped and shouted that he had managed to win and was taken as a hunter. Reporters congratulated the man who came out and hurried to find out his name. At the same time the elderly man embarrassedly adjusted his tie and called his name. His name is Desen. Hearing this, those present were stunned because in front of them was the legendary Han Dae Song. After that the crowd began to attract the man more and more, they wanted to know about the abilities of the hero and also about what happened during the test. When suddenly someone suspected that something was wrong here, because Han Dae Song looked completely different, at that moment an old man was shown on the screen who took the twentieth place, and his name is in Dae Song. His qualification is a border guard. At this time, the remaining victims were transported. The beaten guys cursed Jinchul. At this rate they decided that the profession of a gardener was more promising. The worker who helped to evacuate the guys said by phone that they had searched all three levels and found no traces of Zhang Jinchul anywhere. After that he was ordered to close the passage. The man hung up and looked around angrily and thought was it possible that the blonde could escape from here? According to the news, they told in more detail that an unthinkable event happened at the next testing of hunters, namely, most of the test subjects were injured. At this time, Han Dae Song's mother was sorting through old things and was thinking that she should buy new clothes for her boy, when suddenly it was announced on TV that Han Dae Song, who had received a Class A hunter's license, could become the sixth hunter of Class S. Hearing this, the woman could not believe her ears, after which she immediately called her daughter. Soon Han Jisoo appeared on the threshold and wanted to find out what her mother wanted from her, but the woman could not say anything. Looking at the TV, the girl was also shocked, because her brother became a Class A hunter. At that moment the door opened and the black-haired man entered the house. At the same time, the girls looked at the guy as a ghost, but the confused Dae Song only asked what what happened. Meanwhile, the Red Horse Clan, the head of the inspection Kim Siansa said that from now on the activities of the Red Horse Clan associated with hunters are now banned. As well as all hunters, without exception, are required to be released from the clan posts but the long-haired one only grinned when he heard this. Li Siagu realized that apparently he had relied on himself too much. He should have been a little more modest. He was not going to drown because of some lousy dog like Zhang Jinchul. The man with glasses continued his speech. 
he asked Lee Soga to go to the inspection room with him. In response to this, the man with the scar only laughed. After that, he stood up and said that when you do dangerous things, the unexpected can happen. Is the inspector going to believe the words of some Jong Jinchul? Kim Sansu released his aura and asked to go through the soga with him again without any problems. At the same time, the long haired man also released his aura and decided to check with Kim Sansu, thanks to whom he is at this post. Lee Sogu was the second most important in the clan, but he quickly became the leader of the clan after the mysterious death of the former leader. The inspector has great reasons to think that Lee Sogu was involved in this. The long-haired guy himself does not know what the inspection is trying to achieve if they sent only two little hairs to the viper's lair, after which he declared that Pak Janho had completely aged, since he could not put two plus two in his head. Kim Sansa ordered his subordinate to get ready. Chon was confused because the elder did not warn him about it. At the same time the man said if the guy wants to live, they should eliminate the madman before he killed them. Lee Sogu with a smile declares that Kim Sansu apparently had to pay a lot for his place in the inspection, after which he spread his hands and activated his ability, when suddenly the black-haired man was stabbed by his own subordinate. Kim Sansu looked back at the kid, but Jung said it wasn't him, he didn't do anything. At this moment, the long-haired man was surprised with sarcasm that the guys decided to fight among themselves, from now on he had a lot of questions for their leadership. After hearing this, Kim Sansa realized that one of Lee Sogo's abilities. But it was too late. The long-haired man wished the inspector a good way, after which he again used the puppet's aura. Chan yelled. He tried to resist someone else's influence. But his body did not obey and soon his boss fell dead. The guy threw the knife and trembling asked Kim Sansa for forgiveness, claiming that it wasn't him. Soon the doors to the hall opened and Lee Soga proudly walked between his subordinates he should warn the association about what happens if he is disturbed. At that time, Shin Cho Yung was lying in the capsule, and Huang Jun Young was standing next to her and looking at his teacher. He was tormented by the words that the doctor had said a little earlier. The doctor said that the girl would no longer be able to be a hunter since her aura was completely depleted. After that, he raised his gaze and decided to take revenge on Li Sog, no matter what it cost him. At this time, Daesong's mother banged her cup on the table and said that she would not be able to live in peace while her son was engaged in such a dangerous business, and Han Jisoo fully supported her mother's words. The woman said that she had heard on the news that Daesong is very good, but dangerous things always remain dangerous. Now Daesong remembered Chang Ho's words that 99% of families oppose the idea of becoming a hunter, and the remaining 1% simply run away from home. His friend was absolutely right. The mother lowered her eyes and said that if something happens to the guy again like last time, she will. The guy did not let her finish and announced that he had already signed a contract with the Changho clan. Han Jisu asked if her brother had signed a contract with the Seoul clan and he confirmed it, after which Dae Song put his hand in the inventory and the girls were scared again. The black-haired man pulled out a stack of money from the inventory and threw them on the table. He received this deposit from the clan. Desen wants them to close all kinds of debts and use the rest for living. The mother and daughter were again shocked to see such a huge amount, but the ruler of the ghetto announced that there was nothing to make money here and he would continue to earn even more, so Jisoo should start studying well and obey his mother, and his mother just run her household. Daesun takes care of the rest, hearing such girls could not hold back tears, but when he saw this, the guy asked what was the matter because you need to rejoice. The mother hurried to wipe her tears, and Han Jisoo even went berserk, because as soon as she saw the money, her opinion changed dramatically. At the same time, Han Daesong felt at peace, because if this is his reward for returning from hell, then he really likes it. One day, an enraged monster appeared on the ground and swung at the helpless Chan, when suddenly Kim Sansa flew into the monster from his knee, thereby pushing the monster away. After that, the black-haired man turned to his subordinate and clarified whether the newcomer had wet his pants. But the frightened guy could not utter a word. The boss turned his back on him and promised to keep it a secret. Now, Jianu stood over his hero in the morgue and sincerely let out tears. Two more people from the top stood with him over the body. The boss approached the guy and asked for forgiveness. Because it was his fault, he did not realize that Lee Sogu was so crazy. But Chong remembered the words of the long-haired one. The bastard said that they should not touch him anymore, 
but now the guy decided to personally cut his throat. Park Chong-ho turned to the head of the department and ordered him to catch all the hunters of the association. The man asked in surprise whether he should even catch the preparatory squad. At the same time, the gray-haired man said that he should disband the entire Red Horse clan and catch Lee Soga if they resisted being allowed to kill. The next morning there was a constant chirping in Han Danson's house. Soon the guy woke up from the constant noise and looking into the phone he found 101 notifications. As soon as he became a hunter, a whole bunch of spam began to come to him, when suddenly out of hundreds of messages he saw a letter from Chan Ho, who asked him to call the guy as soon as he wakes up. Going out into the courtyard, the black-haired man called his friend and he said that the Class C portal won at the auction. It was good news, because now the money will flow like a river. A bunch of black cars were heading to the Red Horse building. Soon the hunters arrived at their destination and got down to business. The person in charge of the operation was an awakened ranker named Jean Kihan. Soon he ordered a squad of hunters to come in first. After them the cavalrymen would flow. They were also ordered to suppress any resistance, and when the awakened resisted, they were allowed to kill. After that, the guy with the earrings in his ears announced the beginning of the operation. The guys ran forward and stopped abruptly. The Red Horse clan's henchmen were lying in front of them who were begging for help. Ho Chong could not understand what had happened here and what they should do next. Then Jean Kihan ordered the rear guard to sort it out here, and the rest follow him. Along the broken quarter, in the middle of a pile of bodies, a large figure was sitting on a chair, and it was an angry Huang Junyan. The elite group of hunters continued to explore the estate of the Red Horse clan. Soon they reached the doors that led to the main hall. Ho Chong took out his blade and wanted to see Li Soga but he found the lifeless body of the long-haired man in front of him. Soon the rest of the guys pulled up to the place of the incident. Ho Yung could not understand why he was dead and in a rage demanded the scumbag to get up. The guy had to personally avenge his fallen friend, but Jean Kihan sat down next to him and asked Yung to stop because Lee Sogu was already dead. At the same time the guy regained consciousness. A hunter of rank A approached Huang Jun Young and said that it was too much even for personal revenge to which the man replied that everything that was outside was his handiwork. But he did not kill Lee Sog. Hearing this, the black-haired man was in a stupor. Meanwhile, in a very unremarkable building, the next news was reproduced, according to which it was transmitted that the head of the Red Horse clan, Lee Sogu, was found murdered, and also at the moment the main suspect is the head of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan. Most of the awakened of the Red Horse clan were also killed, the old man in front of whom this news was going was furious that he still had not received a call. No existing clan took it, so the old man created his own. But if everything continues in the same spirit, he won't even be able to look at the monsters and will soon die of hunger, when suddenly a notification came to his phone. Looking at him, the old man's face suddenly lit up with joy. At this time, the guys were driving a snow-white car. Chang Ho was surprised that his friend accepted all ten offers from different clans, because his sole clan would be enough for him, because their clan has the best equipment. However, Han Dae Song said that he didn't need it, he couldn't just show off his personal equipment from hell. Soon, the black-haired man looked at his friend and hurried to find out how much he could earn in the sea level portal, to which the guy replied that level C tasks cost 50 billion, taxes and fees alone cost 30 billion. Hearing this, Desson lost his temper, because on what grounds are they asking for such an absurd amount? At the same time, Chan Ho said that if he managed to get an ethereal core, then it would be possible to earn money, after which Koronavalasi recalls that Day Song was allocated an escort who would go with him and collect cores, but would he really cope alone? However, the Lord of Hell did not understand why he was going alone, because Chan Ho should also go with him. There was a minute's pause in the car after which the confused guy asked Dessen to repeat what he said. At the same time, the black-haired man announced that he had recorded his best friend as his escort, and he instructed his sister to do all the documentation, since he was too lazy to do it. After hearing this, Chan Ho realized how much he was in trouble. Soon the guys were greeted at the entrance to the portal and asked to show a certificate. The mortified man took out his ticket to hell and gave it to the guy in uniform. The man quickly got acquainted with the document after which he reminded that this zone is a military zone and whether the guys have enough staff for the guys, because for this portal you will need at least 100 hunters of rank C. 
The guy in the suit fully supported the military, but his friend, a psycho who became a hunter of rank A, apparently decided that he could circumvent all the rules of the association. Besides, Chan Ho did not even have time to get married. After listening to this, the military smiled and although it doesn't make sense, but he will open a portal for them following all the instructions, after which he ordered the barricade to be opened, he took these guys for psychos, so he didn't worry too much. Chan Ho harbored the last hope that his friend would come to his senses and asked him again if he was sure. After all, no matter how strong it is, it is still a military zone and a level C portal. All ten clans are not taking up this portal now because of the weakening of electricity. However, Dae Song grabbed his timid friend and told him to calm down, but Jang Ho did not expect such decisive actions and asked him to let him go, at least to say goodbye to his family. He also warned that if something goes wrong with the plan, he would leave him, he says for earlier so that Dae Song would not complain later that Chang Ho is an unfaithful friend. Lee Sogu was on his knees with downcast eyes when suddenly something lifted him into the air and he begged for help while every limb in his body alternately broke, after which something looked at the cockroach and reached for him. Namely, behind his heart, after which the lifeless body collapsed to the ground. Those responsible for the disassembly with the red horse viewed the recording from the video camera. Park Chong-ho turned to the hunter. He wanted to know if it was possible to check who took it off. Jean Kihun stated that there was only one surveillance camera and so far verification is impossible. The head of the department said that they conducted an autopsy of the corpse, but they were unable to determine who was the bearer of that strange aura. At the same time Park Chong-ho suggested with horror that it could be a ghost. At the same time, a van drove up to the portal, and Anderson, responsible for today's processing, got out of it. The military was happy to greet the person responsible for processing but he said that the old man arrived too early, because less than half an hour had passed since the hunters entered the portal. At the same time, the old man asked the hunter responsible for today's attack by the case of Han Dae Song. The soldier looked at his papers and confirmed the old man's guess and he was overjoyed. No one took up this case because this is a military zone and Han Dae Song took up it. Today the man is lucky. The day of testing the third level. The cut Jonkel desperately wanted to live despite his injury. He wanted to survive and take revenge. Suddenly a portal opened in front of him, and a voice was heard offering him his help. Something was looking at him. The guys came out of the portal. Chang Ho was inside the portal for the first time, and this achievement did not make him very happy. Suddenly, the black-haired man was surprised that there were really a lot of monsters. But the guy in the suit did not see anyone when suddenly a horde of running monsters appeared on the horizon. These monsters occupied the third level of danger, and they were called Wasteland Yasherits. They were striving for their food. However, Han Song opened the portal and took out his demonic sword from it, and decided that it would be better if he killed them all at once, after which he told his friend to look more carefully and jumped on the crowd of monsters. Chan Ho opened his mouth in surprise, and Song was already running to his enemies. After the landing, the monsters scattered in different directions, after which the black-haired man activated a special karma skill volcano. The mountains were swallowed up by magma, and soon the desert turned into split snakes from what he saw. Chan Ho doubted whether it was his old friend for sure. Dae Song was walking back towards the guy in the suit, and Jang H. Cho started shouting at the black-haired man. He did not expect that his friend would turn out to be a living embodiment of Superman who was hiding his strength. After hearing this, the ruler of hell embarrassedly puts his weapons in his inventory. Suddenly Chang Ho declares that they are obliged to create their best guild in the world. Less than an hour later, the portal into which the guys entered began to sparkle. The military who were nearby assumed that this was a measurement gap, which means that they are completely fucked. However, the old man drew the guys' attention to the fact that someone was coming out of the portal. It was the carefree Han Dae Song and his happy partner. Passing by the soldiers, Chan Ho turned to one of them and asked them to collect the remains. A black-haired guy in uniform had a cold sweat running down his face, because such a thing cannot be possible. The strongest old man with whom he once passed the test congratulated the rising star, but the ruler of hell was a little worried about something else he has the same name with this bald grandfather. Chan Ho was surprised, because shouldn't the old man have colleagues if he is from the clan of collectors? However, 
He handed out a business card and said that this was his temporary day job and he would try his best to match his name. Hearing this, Dessen turned around and walked away. The guy in the suit asked to wait for his comrade, but the ruler of hell was lost in his thoughts and reflected that he could not even change his name. One of the most elite skyscrapers with a helipad, passing through the apartment Ryertal explained that this apartment offers a stunning view, and everything is perfect in the house itself. Suddenly, Han Jisu jumped out from behind the wall, who declared with admiration that there is even a toilet in every room here. At the same time, the mother realized that they were quite satisfied with this room, and she decided to ask how much does living here cost? The man with glasses said that the official value is 17 billion, and the actual transaction is 8 billion. Upon hearing this, the woman fell into a stupor, but the man tried to justify this amount by saying that the association of hunters is right here nearby. According to the business guy in the jacket in their time, the most important thing is safety. He also remembers that if he is not mistaken, her son also became a successful hunter. Here, Han Jisu gets into the conversation again, who proudly declares that her brother is an A-level hunter who could become an S-level hunter. But now the man with glasses understands why the boy has such a familiar face. The ruler of hell said that he liked the house and he wanted to get a discount if he made a purchase right now. However, the realtor was not going to lower the price. He again tried to explain it by saying that the level of security affects the price of apartments. He also mentioned that in one of the expensive houses nearby, Li Changshik Hunter of the S-level lives. Hearing this, Han Dae Song got really angry. He wanted to know how much cheaper he gives apartments to S-level hunters. At the same time, the confused man said that they were given about a hundred billion. This price tag greatly impressed the women, but Dessen sees new opportunities that he can get, for example, he can buy this house that costs eighty billion. Late at night, when the city stopped, a lonely woman was walking along a dark street, it seemed to her without reason that someone was following her. At the same time, the girl decided to speed up her step when suddenly she bumped into a mysterious figure clumsily. Frightened, the girl with a tremor in her voice asked the unknown who is he? However, the guy ignored her question and said that she should not be afraid of him, and also she has a choice, and she should be grateful for it. The next day there is a morgue at the police station. Those present noticed that this girl died in exactly the same way as Sogu, only there are ten such victims in Seoul and even more across the country. The fat man said that they would not be able to stop the reporters, but the guys standing opposite thought to themselves that it must have been done by the awakened one. Jean Kihan was very seriously concerned, not only that the portal with monsters has been opening more and more lately, but also a killer who rips out hearts has appeared. Standing next to Ho Chong turned to his boss and asked him to entrust this case to him. He promised to catch the criminal by all means but the black-haired man decided for himself that for now he would think that it was connected with the same one who killed Soga. Having finished his thought process, the hunter replied to his partner that it was better for him to do business with portals for now. After that, Jean Kihun turned to a man standing next to him and asked him to monitor what was happening so that these cases would not leak into the news. In exchange, he promised to allocate a sufficient number of people from the inspection department. Meanwhile, Zhang Jinchou woke up in the incubator, looking around, he could not figure out where he was. All this time, an unknown man in a bathrobe was standing near his capsule and muttering to himself. Turning around, the man noticed with a smile that the boy woke up and slowly he began to approach his bed, and the blonde kid began to panic. When the mad scientist approached, he asked the youngster if he did not find this place similar to the laboratory of the Red Horse clan. Now the worried Zhang Jinchou remembered the room where the ampoule was injected into him. The guy in the dressing gown grinned, because the ampoule he gave to Sog turned out to be effective, just the same he personally asked his boss to save the youngster. After that, the madman introduced himself as Elder Hans, and his name is Roman. Jinchou remembered those mysterious eyes that he saw before he lost consciousness, which means he really didn't die. The black-haired man declared that from now on the boy should consider it a rebirth and from now on he is a servant of Hans. Hearing this, the blonde guy asked again, but he didn't have to think for a long time. The man took out an ampoule and asked the boy if he wanted to conquer the whole world with him, because that way he would get much more power. Meanwhile, in one of the offices of the hunters, there was a letter of resignation on the table. And a disgruntled Chang Ho listened to his friend's crazy ideas. 
Han Daesong wanted to become an S-rank hunter as soon as possible. At the same time, the ruler of Hell declared that he was ready to take on absolutely all portals, because he needed a good discount on a new home. Not having time to realize when Desen managed to buy himself a new apartment, he realized the seriousness of his words, however. He warned the black-haired man that first he needed to finish his business in the office, and in the meantime he offered the newly minted Akotnik to visit the Aura market and buy equipment there. Equipment, the Lord of Hell had completely forgotten about something like that. Upon entering the Colosseum, a notification appeared in front of him clarifying whether he was exactly ready to complete the mission, and the guy immediately agreed. At the same time, the following message popped up in front of him with the available options. After a little thought, Han Dae Song decided to choose the fifth option, the Iron Fortress. Soon, the following notification was highlighted, which stated that Han Dae Song would have to eliminate the rulers who would be on the field, preserving the law of causality in order to remove the seal to remove the seal from space and time. Another message appears in front of him demanding confirmation of whether he is sure that he wants to download information about the Iron Fortress of Balark, recorded in 45 years and 78 days. At the same time, the ruler of hell confirms his intention, and his entire past life flashes before him. Soon, a mysterious light appears near the iron fortress of Balark. A man with a wooden shield and an iron sword comes out of it. It was Han Dae Song, who was greatly puzzled by his ridiculous appearance, and it slightly got on his nerves. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, there was a scattered stack of newspapers on one of the tables, which only talked about the appearance of a serial killer. Sitting in the chair, Park Chong Ho arranged for each clan to notify about this and put the news on the main page. Suddenly the door to the office of the chief executive opens slightly. A girl named Aim comes out of it. She hurries to report to her master that the Ocean Clan has failed its task in the B-level basement. However, the guy in the jacket was surprised. He remembers that the Ocean Clan is considered a fourth-generation clan where there is a back heron, and there are quite a lot of awakened Class A. In response, the girl adjusting her glasses, declares that the strength of the monsters turned out to be more powerful than the skills of Bak Heron. then the place needs another S-class hunter. Thinking about it, Park Cheng-ho realized the seriousness of the problem, because if you don't clean up the already open portal in twelve hours, then there will be a gap in it. However, it's good that it wasn't someone else who requested help, namely Bak Heron. Soon, the chief executive ordered to explain the situation to Li chang Seek and Seo dong Kal, and request their cooperation on behalf of Beck Heron. The guy in the jacket realized the intention of the boss, because if you do this, then no one will be able to refuse the number one hunter in Korea. Then Ain appears, who reminds me of a huntress named Ryu Son from Fortis. They don't get along well with each other. However, Park Jong Hun didn't care. He wanted the guys to do everything possible so that the portal would not break. Meanwhile, there was a children's shelter in the destroyed part of the city. Children were having fun on the playground and an adult man was watching them from the side. Two of the guys were playing roles and the black-haired one wanted to get rid of the monster in the yellow t-shirt, but the boy objected and flatly refused the role of the monster. At the same time, a red-eyed man enters the game his name is So Donkal, he is an S-class hunter and belongs to the Raven clan, he is thirty-five years old, and he is the second in rank in Korea. Turning around, the children united in order to overcome such an adult monster, and the man happily played along with them, and began his transformation into a monster, when suddenly a nun turned to him. The second hunter on the list looked at the girl with bewilderment, and asked what happened. At the same time the girl grinned and said that an urgent call from the association had come. At the same time, the man took the phone and said that he was not allowed to relax at all, after which he asked the girl to take the children inside because it was time for him to go. Before the Donka left them, the woman asks him to be more careful and wishes him good luck, but the guy asks if they really doubt the best hunter of their country. Soon, two lines of hunters lined up on Jeju Island near the sea level portal, an unknown figure came out of the Red Rift and said that she was bored. This was Lee Changshik, a class S awakened who held the first rank in Korea and was only twenty eight years old. The young hero was greeted with open arms by the rest of the audience. A secretary approached the white-haired guy and said that they had received an official request for help on behalf of Beck Heron. Hearing this, the blue-eyed hunter smiled and, taking a look, remembered what a beauty she was. Meanwhile, 
Han Dae Song stood on one of the seals and that in turn activated, after which a monster began to stick out from under the ground and a moment later the monster sat at the entrance to the fortress. Before the ruler of hell, a notification appeared again notifying that the content of his pretrial mission is that he needs to fill up the guard of the gates of the Iron Fortress, and the time to complete this mission is unlimited. The black-haired man understood that with his current body, it would be dangerous to even walk around there now, because at the moment he only has an ODI sword and an ice shield. At the same time, the ruler of hell threw his equipment and sat down on the ground. The guy thought about how he knocked down this monster last time but his memory turned out to suck. At the same time, he looked in front of him again and noticed the ice shield. After that he looked at the boss again, and suddenly it dawned on him. Meanwhile, the military in the city fenced off the entrance to the level B portal and asked reporters not to cross the set boundaries. However, an amazing number of reporters gathered near the place of the incident who were already ready to tell the people about the first unsuccessful attempt to clean up this ocean clan portal local government officials could not understand where this information had leaked from. Suddenly, the gathered people turned around and rushed to the Ocean Clan and its representative Beck Heron. Reporters wanted to find out from the S-Class Hunter the details of the attack and how she was going to overcome the consequences of the failure of the first attack. Of course, many men were interested in another most important question. Does such a charming girl have a young man? Soon, Obek Heron approached an inconspicuous guy from the crowd and politely asked him for a microphone for a few seconds. As a result, she began her grandiose speech that they would definitely prevent the destruction of the portal, and she had already requested help from two of the strongest hunters of their country for this. At first, those present did not understand who could be stronger than Beck Heron herself, but soon there were astonished guesses and she confirmed them because for this mission she called the first and second in the ranking in Korea Lee Chang-shik and So dong -kul. Reporters even failed to notice how two celebrities got close to the ominous portal and hurried to shoot such amazing material. Meanwhile, Galbaglazi with a grin on his face was surprised at how a woman from her failure was able to deploy a whole show. It was not for nothing that he chose her. Standing next to dong -kul suggested that most likely she called all these journalists— and then the queen of this scene squeezed into their conversation. The street was full of reporters and they were all in a hurry to write a whole article about it as three S-class heroes would attack shoulder to shoulder. Meanwhile, a meteor was flying in the Colosseum, which landed exactly in the head of the monster guarding the entrance to the fortress. The attacks did not end there. The ruler of hell continued to fire fireballs at the monster. At the same time the boss activated his aura and became enraged but Dessen was trying to achieve this. The black-haired man took a stand and concentrated, because one slightest mistake would cost him his life. At this time, the furious monster was yelling at the guy. The monster did not understand how such an insignificant flea dared to wake him up, when suddenly a giant creature slipped on the ice. The monster with all its might crashed to the ground and the ruler of hell was not going to lose such a great opportunity. Everything was going exactly as he had planned. Running up to the lying monster, he raised his blade over his head and noticed the seal he needed. Then he did not waste time and stuck his sword straight into the seal on the guard's neck. At the same time, the howl of a defeated reptiloid sounded over the entire iron fortress, while the ruler of hell himself stood motionless and looked at the dying fire. Looking at his cracked sword, Daesong grinned. He was very lucky that he could remember about the weak neck of this creature. Now, this damaged equipment will not be of any use with such soaps. The black-haired man dumped garbage on the ground. Suddenly, a notification appeared in front of the guy saying that Han Dae Song had received a special permission that was on the seal. Now he can enter the Iron Fortress of Balark. Now his implementation level has reached 33%. However, before entering such a dangerous institution, the guy decides to get a suitable weapon first. Now the guy had to overcome various traps and advance to the Balark room. Again, he has no time limit for this mission. The guy from the ghetto stood and felt the concrete wall. He was sure that what he needed was definitely somewhere here. By clicking on the next block, he shifted, which meant that he found what he needed. After clicking, a secret mechanism was activated and mysterious doors opened in front of the ruler of hell. A notification appeared in front of the guy again which notified him that he had found the Balark treasury. Now he can use it for five minutes, after that the timer went. In front of Han Dae Song there was a room filled with various equipment, 
Slowly the kid approached a wooden stand and drew attention to one of them. It was a dark sword that can be a deadly weapon against dragons. Although the sword was of a low class, however, without this weapon, Han Dae Song would not be able to enter Balak's room. Exactly two minutes have passed since the ruler of hell opened this treasure in front of him, but he did not hurry and stood motionless, resting on a new sword. There were various armors and treasures in front of him. At first he did not betray much importance to them, but after thinking carefully, he realized that it could be the money that he did not have enough for a first-class apartment. In front of the black-haired man, a collegium notification was again displayed telling him that he had fulfilled the conditions of the task and now he was able to enter Balak's room. From now on his level of realization in the Iron Fortress reached 66%. Now the ruler of hell was standing in front of the iron doors. Finally he had to fight with the last boss. The monster with round scarlet eyes bequeathed at the top of his throat, so he couldn't stand such a terrible ultrasound and was about to tear off the poor guy's head so that he calmed down. When suddenly the giant began his fierce attack, he grabbed his mighty bat and struck a crushing blow. However, the damage did not reach its goal, because the hunter soared into the air and was ready to strike back. The next moment, he hit the screaming monster on the head with all his might, but after that the screams of the mad creature became even louder. So Donkal turned to his team of hunters and ordered them to attack together right now, after which the adventurers rushed into battle. The guys surrounded the lying monster and continuously inflicted cutting blows on it, but their weapons could not penetrate its thick hide. At this time, Bak Heron appeared behind the black-haired hunter, who was cheering with an ardent enthusiast from the Dunkel, when suddenly someone's voice rang out behind her. Was it Changshik soaked in blood? He decided to ask the beauty if she would go on a date with him if he killed all the monsters here? Seeing the hunter in such a state, the girl was horrified after which she immediately used her healing aura, after which the top one hunter felt like new. While the guy was rejoicing at his excellent condition, Beck Heron was in a hurry to find out where the blonde managed to get hurt, when suddenly the blue-eyed man said that he had prepared a gift for her. In front of the girl lay the thick of the defeated ogre king, who occupied the second level of danger. From what he saw, the huntress instinctively opened her mouth, because the guy was able to defeat the ogre king alone it's just not true. Li Chang Shi hugged the beauty and wanted to know if he was cool enough, but after pulling off her teeth, the girl demanded that the boy take his hands off her. At this time, the enraged monsters continued to shred the squad of newcomers, so Donkul could not understand what kind of magical skin the monster had, which even with the help of an aura could not break through. Seeing this, a blonde guy in a dark robe went to the aid of his comrades and before he left, he asked the girl to keep her promise about a date. After that he disappeared. However, Beck Heron continued to stand in disbelief, because she does not remember promising anyone anything. Meanwhile, in the Iron Tower, before entering the Iron Gate, Han Dae Song decides to open a stock of his potions. A notification pops up in front of him that there are 128,000 points in his current account, and is he sure that he wants to use bubbles with experience? Without thinking twice, the ruler of hell decides to use the bottles according to Maxim after which a bright light began to emanate from the glass container, which rushed into the body of the black-haired boy. After that, the Lord of Hell received a buff of all characteristics by 10%. After evaluating the effect of potions, he was ready to start a fight. The next moment, he opened the iron doors leading to a spacious hall and Balark sat on his gilded throne in front of Han Dae Song. The black-haired man greeted his old acquaintance, but the demon did not blink an eye in response. Suddenly, one of the walls of the room crumbled into small pieces. The fault of this was the scarlet dragon that had flown in. Without thinking twice, the horned creature opened its mouth and prepared a fiery volley at the target. But the guy had long been ready for the upcoming battle. He had a resistance to vanishing dragons and also used an ability called blood naturalization. Meanwhile, in the real world, the curly-haired guy greeted the weekly hunter's dear subscribers on his channel, and his name is Yen Gil. To begin with, he decided to look at the rating of hunters this week. The first place in his rating was taken by the youngest son of a conglomerate who became a hunter just as a hobby Lee Changshik, to which he is the CEO and part-time chairman of the Josian clan. The second place was taken by the director of the orphanage, the godfather of So Dunkal. He became a father to many orphans who lost their real parents because of suddenly open portals. 
The list ends with a white lily blooming among the sullen hunter's lovely back heron. The guy says that this week there was one unpleasant situation in the Class B portal, but a team of three best heroes solved this problem in just six hours. Sitting at the computer, Yangil remembered what he still wanted to tell, when suddenly he saw a familiar face that he had already seen somewhere. Without thinking for long, he remembered that in front of him was depicted that incredible guy who single-handedly saved him once from a crowd of monsters. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, a mad hunter was sitting at a desk in the office. He noticed that the hunters began to clean the portals very quickly. Suddenly, colleagues approached a man and named Jake and offered him a drink at a nearby institution. But a man in a red robe said that he still had unfinished business at home, so he was forced to refuse. When the guys left, the scientist took up a computer mouse and opened a map of Korea. Looking at it, he realized that they lacked a scapegoat, so the man decides that they should change the current circumstances. Meanwhile, Han Dae Song was standing in front of an enraged dragon. Suddenly flames began to erupt from the mouth of a wild reptile. However, the dark-haired man could not allow the dragon to make his attack, and with the words one blow is death, he pierced the monster's thicket. From the bloodshed, memories of the old days came flooding back to the guy. While Han Dae Song was coming to the senses, Balark was ready to pierce the impudent man with his spear, but the ruler of hell dodges such a ridiculous attack without a break. The guy is already quite tired of this ugly mission, and with a heavy exhalation he decides to finish it quickly. But the angry Balark did not say a word. After that, the giant began to continuously attack the black-haired young man, but the guy easily reflected every attack of the monster, and stretching out the knight in front of him, he decided that it was his turn to attack. The guy released the accumulated energy and continued to fiercely repel attacks, but the toothy ruler of the fortress did not slow down the temp from which Han Dae Song began to lose ground. I'll take a sideways look at Balark, the dark-haired guy asked why he was so strong. Suddenly, the monster screamed at all the Iron Fortress, after which wings formed behind the back of the giant. Balark used the skill of the Brontosaurus cannon, and with the words one attack one death, he rushed at the insolent man who invaded his fortress. As a result, the hefty monster was beheaded. Looking back, Han Dae Song grinned at the fact that the lizard turned into a dragon. Suddenly, a white liquid began to flow out of the head of the defeated monster, and an unknown creature began to form from it. The ruler of hell saw something like this for the first time. The snow-white creature who appeared asked furiously who dared to disturb the rest of the holy apostles. Scarlet blood continued to drip in front of the shoes of the unknown. The maniac squeezing out the last drops of blood from his heart prayed to his lord that the sacrifice would be successful. When suddenly scarlet vines began to climb out of the red puddle and a portal formed in front of the guy in the raincoat. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, a mad scientist received a call to his work phone and he officially introduced himself saying that his name was Jake and he was the director of portal search engines. The maniac told his master that he had successfully carried out his sacrifice with the hearts that he had collected before. Hearing this, the man grinned. The scientist said that he would let the Hunters' Association know about it. After that his subordinate asked when he should finish the sacrifice? To which the man in the red robe said that as soon as there were enough scapegoats, he would finish this case. Several notifications popped up in front of Han Dae Song saying that an unknown creature had entered the system and the system was also able to identify the monster as an excellent celestial, after which it began to glitch. Seeing that the alerts were out of order, the black-haired youngster assumed that Snow White in front of him was incredibly strong. Suddenly, another message appeared in front of the guy, which said that the guy could use his own power since the process of implementing the terrain was completed, after which the question was whether the guy wanted to use his own power. The ruler of hell smiled and noticed that it was damn timely after which Han Dae Song was surrounded by incredible energy. Looking at this, the celestial grinned, because such an insignificant bug decided that it could stop the course of the universe, after which the monster ordered the guy to die. A powerful explosion occurred in the Iron Tower of Balark. Looking at this, the celestial assumed that there was no dust left from the guy. When suddenly a black-haired boy with his mighty sword flew out of the thick smoke, the next moment, he plunged his blade into the body of a snow-white monster. However, there was a moment of silence on the battlefield. The celestial with Scarlet Galasmi grinned and asked if the guy really thought he could harm him with this ridiculous attack. 
However, the ruler of hell did not hope for this. The black-haired man decided to use the last skill of hell, which can only be activated in hell and the strength of this ability depends on the level of realization. The monster appeared in the boundless, echoing space, looking around absurdly. A certain glow began to form behind him this was Han Daesong's ability a fiery pond, eternal suffering. Gradually disappearing, the celestial could not believe what was happening so that such an insignificant bug had such an attack, he wanted to report it to the rest of the celestials, but he was completely swallowed up by a black hole. After that, notifications were displayed in front of the ruler of hell, which said that the excellent celestial was destroyed, and therefore the system was restored. And also there was a reminder that the mission will end as soon as the guy takes his place on the throne of the ruler. Walking slowly to the deserved place, the great Khan Dae Song ran to the golden throne. Touching the base of the ruler's chair, it began to transform and a moment later a staircase appeared in front of the black-haired man that led straight to the throne. Gradually climbing up it, messages from demons who were imprisoned were displayed in front of the ruler of hell. They were delighted with such a bright sight. Soon, a notification appeared in front of the guy saying that the Balark mission was successfully completed, as a result of which the guy acquired two S-class skills, an exchange of territory and a Balark celestial. Also now Han Dae Song could summon defeated enemies to his shadow army. The monsters bowed to their boss and swore to serve him forever. After hearing this, the guy noticed that the demons were too dirty and asked them to shut up, because they would summon them as soon as they were needed. Sitting on the throne, the black-haired man decides that he just needs to remove all these portals and earn some money. Meanwhile, a first-degree alarm was announced in the Hunters Association, because a level 8 portal was discovered in Gangnam, Dogecton District. Before announcing an emergency evacuation of residents, it was decided to send an operation group there first. The main leader Park Chong-ho entered the observation room. The man asked if this was the same portal as five years ago that destroyed everything around him. And the chairman confirmed his terrible guess. There was definitely a level A portal in front of them. Raised his hand to his chin, the chief executive plunged into thoughts. Without thinking for long, the man demanded to call all hunters and ask for additional help from the World Organization of Hunters. Bowing, the dark-haired man said that everything would be done. Meanwhile, the system decided to show the ruler of hell his current characteristics. The physical realization of Han Dae Song reached 48%, and the magical 41. Also, the guy had a new ability called the exchange area. It allowed him to change the places of the real world to the terrain from hell. At the moment available to him is the Ethio Iron Fortress of Balark. Looking at the system notifications, the dark-haired guy noticed that his implementation is still too low and he decides that he should earn a few more new skills. Standing on an empty platform, the ruler of hell decides to use the exchange of terrain. This event was recorded on the 124th page of his diary, and it happened three years ago. Gradually the Colosseum in front of Han Dae Song began to change. Meanwhile, in the Hunters Association, all the main leaders gathered at a round table, as well as a number of important people were present online at this conference. Looking around, the chairman made sure that everyone was gathered and since this is the case, he decides to start a meeting about ways to solve the A-level portal in Gangnam. A law enforcement bus was driving along a busy street in Korea. Huang Junyan was sitting in it surrounded by a convo. The man sitting on the chair was thinking who could be the killer. Lee Suga could not be killed so easily. Even for a professional mercenary it would not be easy and the dark-bearded man realizes that someone powerful must definitely be involved in this case. Also Huang Junyan sincerely hopes that everything will be all right with his student. Suddenly, the door of the hospital room opened and a nurse came in with a fresh cart full of food, but the employee notices that the patient did not even touch the last food. The black-haired girl notifies Shinchon that she will remove the four, since there is no sense from her anyway since the huntress does not feed. Sitting on the hospital bed, the girl clenched her trembling fist. Shinchon did not even listen to what the nurse was saying. She was immersed in her thoughts, and she blamed herself for what happened to her master. Meanwhile, the gathering was in full swing. An old man named Ryu Jones, who is the head of the Fortress clan, said that their huntress Son has been gone for a whole month since she went to investigate. The deputy chief of the Marble clan, Cho Hanku, who is the brother of the head of the clan named Cho Hano, who ranked fifth in the S-class hunter rating, said that his brother was in Silicon Valley to develop aura weapons, 
but after learning about the events that are taking place in Korea, he decided to return to his homeland as soon as possible. Upon hearing this, the chairman said that this time too, Lee Changshik, so Dong Kal and Beck Heron would be responsible for the attack. Picking his nose with Dong Kal agreed because they have no choice, if they can't stop this threat, then everyone will die. However, the blonde boy did not care much about it, he agreed to take part only because Bak Heron was going there, who promised him a date. Hearing this, the girl was outraged because they already had a date, and she even treated the guy to meat and bought him dessert. Didn't he remember that? But Lee Chang Shik was not happy with what happened, because the date should take place alone, and for some reason the girl called them from the down call, so the hunter cannot count this event as a date. The furious girl claims that if she said it was a date, then it was. Watching the children from Donetsk, I was ashamed that he was familiar with them and said that the guys would then solve their problem themselves, and it would be better for them to give volunteers for this mission among the A-class hunters. The audience decided that this was a great idea, because if a trio of S-class heroes could clear the A-level portal, then it would be a significant event in Korea. After listening to all this, the chief executive Park Chong-ho demanded to find at least a hundred A-rank volunteers and 10,000 ethers. From these words, the leaders were alarmed, because 10,000 ethers is the annual stock of the association, it's a lot. Jake was sitting inconspicuously at the table among those present, who was listening attentively to all the plans of the association. Soon an alarm sounded throughout the city, which notified of the danger of the first level and all residents were advised to take shelter in the bomb shelter of the association. A heavy downpour covered the building under construction, a uniformed man ran up to the two guards in raincoats and handed over the received order, and the assembled squad of hunters were ready to begin the operation. Among the crowd there were those who were not happy with what was happening, because it was too sudden, some even came here to look at the top hunters. So Donkal, throwing the bat behind his back, said that they should finish this business quickly so that the guys could go on their date. Hearing this, Li Changshik asked the elder not to come any more. However, the black-haired man was not going to interfere with this couple. He asked the guys not to fuss and wish each other good luck. After these words, the hunters rushed into the dark portal and a beautiful view opened up in front of them. So Donkal, looking back at his squad, ordered them to check their equipment and disperse around the area. Li Changshik notified Bak Heron that he was going to scout the nearby area and asked her not to go anywhere. As soon as the guy left, the girl contacted the black-haired man and told him that hunter number one went to investigate. After listening to this, he was outraged because the guy could personally transmit this information through a radio transmitter. Turning to the rest of the hunters, the guy with the bat notified the others that Li Changshik had gone to investigate. So he ordered the guys to break the main camp into two lines. After listening to the person responsible for the operation, the hunters began to carry out the order. Meanwhile, Chang Ho stood in the office and prayed to all the gods that his friend would pick up the damn phone and the gods would hear him. The dark-haired man answered him and asked what he wanted from him. Restraining his rage, the guy in the suit politely asked why his friend did not take his phone for so long, because they had an extraordinary situation. However, instead of answering, he heard Han Dae Song's dialogue with his mother, he asked her not to take so many unnecessary things to their new home. Falling on a computer chair, Chan Ho asked if the guy was moving. Everything was exactly like that. However, the Lord of Hell bothered to ask what happened. At the same time, the brown-haired one said that a level A portal had opened in Gangnam, and now the association requires all hunters above level B to go there. The black-haired guy was surprised that such a grandiose event was taking place near his house but he still did not understand what kind of portal was there that so many people were called there. At the same time, Chan Ho introduced the guy to the fact that five years ago it was because of the gaps in this portal that there were gaps in others. Three S-class hunters were barely able to close it at that time. In response to this, from the handset of the ruler of hell, he could be heard asking his mother not to take anything from the kitchen utensils and promising her to buy everything new. After that, closing his eyes, the guy wonders if he will be raised if he successfully closes this portal. Hearing such an audacious statement, Chan Ho was dumbfounded and did not know what to answer. Meanwhile, a crowd of blood wolves appeared inside the portal. They occupied the second level of danger, and their favorite delicacy was human blood. Hiding behind the stone, Sodankal said that the monsters were detected for twelve hours, for three hours, also for nine hours. Suddenly, 
one of the hunters noticed another pack of wolves for six hours and transmitted this information through the radio. Looking around, the black-haired man's pupils narrowed because their squad was surrounded by bloodthirsty wolves. Ethers appear if you defeat monsters inside the portal. At the moment there are ethers from class E to class S. Humanity was going to collapse due to unequal development, environmental destruction and inadequate use of natural resources. At this time, ethers appeared that had a special energy. Thereby they helped humanity to avoid the inevitable destruction. More importantly, if you charge the auras with ether and inject them into the awakened one, then his skills will improve significantly. Just as aura weapons are important for attacking portals, so are ethers important for hunters themselves. So Donkal grabbed a glass bottle and ordered the superior hunter to charge with ether. After hearing the order, the salt troops began to inject themselves with ampoules with unknown contents, after which the strength of their aura increased dramatically, and the guys were ready to take the fight. The bloodthirsty monsters rushed into battle, when suddenly a meteorite flew in front of them, which threw the animals. The hunters recognized Li Changshik as the number one hunter in the silhouette that raced by. The blonde guy was running across the desert land and thinking that he did not want to use this ability. However, they have no other choice and the next moment he uses the release of the aura skill on a wide spectrum. A colossal amount of aura burst out of the black-robed guy's body. The blood wolves stood motionless and drooled hungrily, when suddenly a white-haired youth rushed in front of them, who successfully attracted their attention. So Donkal asked the girl to cover their rear while Li Changshik attracts monsters to himself. Starting to execute the command, the guys scattered in different directions. Running away from the crowd of monsters, the blonde-haired man told the elder to run straight. Looking back, Li Changshik made sure that the monsters continued to follow him. Looking straight ahead, Hunter number one saw in front of him rushing from Donkal, who activated the ether in full. Looking at the loaded comrade, Li Changshik handed him the baton. Suddenly, the black-haired hunter pushed off from the ground and soared into the air in order to use the ability that hits millions of enemies at a time or a lightning. Striking his mighty bat on the ground, a bright flash covered the nearby area, and the bodies of the blood wolves were soaked with an electric discharge. Beck Heron activated her fast aura which covered the friendly troops to strengthen the guys and replenish the reserve of energy spent. The guys were spent with such an amazing effect. At the same time, Li Changshik began to slow down, after which he turned around and rushed back into the inferno. Seeing such a brave action, the hunters were tempted and decided to follow the example of hunter number one. At the same time, in the ruins of an abandoned city, people were buying small packages with unknown contents. After the guy in the pink jacket received his dose, the man in the suit called the next one from the queue. Suddenly, his partner appeared from around the corner of the concrete wall and ordered everyone to run away from here as soon as possible. These words could mean only one thing. The uncouth guys ran as fast as they could from the place of the transaction. The black-haired guy with curly hair could not understand how he had come to such a low life. Suddenly, the guys were enveloped in a bright light coming from the headlights of a police car. A voice was heard from the wheelbarrow who ordered those present to drop their weapons and voluntarily surrender, otherwise the guys would be accused of illegal drug trafficking. A black-haired man holding an ugly blade in his right hand curses everything around. Suddenly the door of the state car opened slightly, and an unknown figure in dark shoes appeared in front of the homeless. The man grinned from what he saw. He did not expect that the entire Red Horse clan would slide so much and become garbage. Those present were worried, they did not expect that someone would be able to recognize them, and they wanted to know who was in front of them. At the same time, Zhang Jinchil in a suit stretched out his hand and invited his former comrades to show the new world. The guys opened their mouths. They could not believe what was happening because there was a living dead man in front of them. Meanwhile, the last bloody wolf was exterminated in the A-level portal. The hunters were not too surprised that they managed to clear the portal of such complexity without casualties on their part but some did not expect anything else because they had three S-class heroes with them. Back Heron alternately served the wounded and, having felt the girl's abilities on himself, was simply delighted, because if he had such abilities, he would not have left the portals. However, the girl was not too happy to hear such praise, because she had already told the guy that her skills are very money-guzzling and they definitely need A-class ethers, and if you consider that the downcall also use such an ether, then they plunge into debt. The black-haired man realized that he felt better without treatment, 
but he was already gradually starting to develop immunity to her screams. Li Changshik appeared behind the girl's back, who noticed that Beck Heron was chirping like a bird, hearing such a thing, the girl's rage was replaced by pure fear. At this time, the rest of the hunters were examining the bodies of the defeated monsters and one of the guys was very happy when he was able to detect the B-class ether, when suddenly his head shattered into molecules. The terrified hunters rushed to the guy's aid, but it was too late, an angry and hungry boss of the portal was sitting in front of the hunters. There was still a heated atmosphere around the portal in the Dagakton area, and a defense of military forces was built within a radius of three kilometers from the portal, and hunters from each region flocked to prevent surprises. According to the news, it was broadcast that the legendary trio of S-class hunters are now on the offensive in the portal. Last time during the attack of the B-level portal they cleared it in a short time and the girl asks is it true? Her colleague, who was in the danger zone, says that everything is exactly like that. Last time the hunters cleared the portal in just 6 hours and 21 minutes. But the current attack has been going on for 10 hours. Just as they were interested, the association set a goal to gather A-level hunters from everywhere and finish this mission. The hunters association was closely watching everything that was happening. The chairman decided to find out from a nearby employee when the hunters from the International Hunters Association should arrive, but the girl replies that there has not yet been an official response. The black-haired man notices that now they are in limbo due to the fact that they cannot contact those inside the portal. In response, the woman says that the military forces and their hunters have gathered, also Cho Haniel should arrive at the scene of the incident in eight hours, but for now they can only hope for three S-class hunters. The chairman asks to continue attempts to communicate with the International Association, and if anything, the man's voice breaks off at these words, he decides not to even think about such an outcome, he can only believe in modern heroes. The hunters, who were preparing for a fierce battle, took out their bows and a hail of arrows flew at the huge demonic wolf. However, the beast easily dodged the flying toothpicks and headed towards the annoying ants. The next moment the blood wolf was ready to crush ordinary people with his mighty paw. When suddenly a dark figure in a raincoat burst out of the crowd, hunter number one rushed to confront the giant monster and repelled its attack, after which he used his skill the sword of pleasure. He struck a powerful blow with his blade, but the monster managed to fight off with its claws. After the unsuccessful attack, Li Changshik jumped aside, but the demon was not going to just let go of his victim and began to attack the young hero. The blonde guy successfully parried the attacks of a huge monster, but the pace of blows did not slow down, and soon such a load on the body made itself felt the hope of all mankind bled. The blood wolf was about to finish off the blonde upstart with the next blow, however, so Don Cull saved his partner from imminent death. Now the black-haired man felt on himself what heavy blows Li Changshik took. At the same time Beck Heron had to heal the wounds of a boy in a dark robe. After receiving first aid, the blue-eyed man looks back and declares to the girl that he owes her his life. But the huntress did not want to hear such a thing. The main thing for her is that the guy could stand on his feet because they still have unfinished business here. The cheerful Li Changshik accepted the order from his beloved woman and the next moment charged his blade with ether to the maximum. At the same time, so Don Kalk continued to wave his bat away from the fang monster alone. Suddenly a blonde hunter flew out from around the corner who used the skill of his aura called Tiger Claws. The unshaven man looked at the restless guy and exhaled heavily. The next moment the hero released his tiger aura and in seconds inflicted cutting blows to the mad wolf, after which he collapsed to the ground. Having seen such an incredible sight, the hunters present began to chant the name of their hero. Standing near the carcass of the bloody wolf, the blonde-haired man, as if nothing had happened, straightened his hair, and exhaling from the bottom, noticed that the guy did not do it alone, but for some reason all the laurels go to him again. Suddenly, a terribly loud sound began to reach the hunter's ears and the guys did not understand what was the matter, when suddenly a horde of the same monsters with their leader appeared on the horizon in front of them it was a relatively small wolf and metal armor from which incredible energy power emanated. There was a panic among the hunters. The guys barely defeated one such wolf, and here in front of them a whole handful of the same monsters. Seeing this, the blonde-haired Li Changshik was dumbfounded and could not utter a word. 
but the squad leader tried to keep his calm and ordered the fighters to immediately gather their strength. Soon, the scarlet portal began to sparkle with new colors outside and began to spark furiously. Watching this, the Hunters Association established that this was a gap, a level A portal gap. The people in the observation room were stunned. The girl with glasses noticed with horror that such a thing could not be possible while the portal was being attacked from the inside. At the same time, the chairman had no choice but to assume that a detachment of three S-class hunters had been destroyed, after which the dark-haired man ordered to quickly convey the emergency situation to all reserve hunters of the country immediately. The people sitting at the equipment began to carry out the order and grab their mobile phones. Meanwhile a three-toed foot stepped on the concrete slab it was a wolf in armor wrapped in a colossal amount of energy. Looking out of their portal together with his wool brothers, he noticed that today they would have a feast and with a smile on his face, he declared the hunt open. The gathering place of reserve hunters, Jean Kihan approached the arriving hunters and looking at his tablet, he hurried to clarify whether the Damvancha clan was in place. Then a few uncouth hunters appeared in front of him. There were only three of them and they were B-class fighters. Looking at them, the dark-haired guy asked a question. What kind of a weird name do they use? Next, he called the Chandel clan to him. It consisted of two incredibly strong and fashionable B-class guys. Looking at these clowns, the guy in the earrings was about to shed a tear, when suddenly it was the turn of the Daesung clan. An inconspicuous guy in a shirt came out of the crowd who introduced himself as Han Daesung, and he is a level A hunter. Looking at the youngster, Jean Kihan was surprised because he had been told to follow this guy in the past. However, this was not so important. Soon the person responsible for gathering the reserve forces announced that the participants had been called for a counterattack to prevent the portal from breaking. Listening to this, the disgruntled ruler of hell began to mutter to himself that they, as a support group, would not only not enter the portal, but would not even stand next to it. After thinking about it, he decides that it would be better if Chang Ho contacted him faster, when suddenly he came to his senses that he usually does not answer calls himself. Suddenly, a loud sound came from the side of the building where the portal was located. Hearing this, those present were surprised, and the frightened Jean Kihan was afraid to guess what it could mean, but for Han Dae Song it was great news. An hour before the portal burst, the battlefield was covered with the blood of dishonor and valiant fighters. The ferocious wolf was running towards his next target. However, his mighty strike was blocked by the hunter who was holding a shield in his hand. Having received such a strong blow, the boy began to slide on the ground. For his level it was an unimaginable opponent, but he did not give up and looked his fear straight in the eyes. The boy with the spear lunged in the hope of hitting the demonic creature. One four-eyed monster soared into the sky and was going to crush the bug with his weight. When suddenly a downcall, who repelled such a heavy blow, found himself on the battlefield and struck the monster with his electric aura, after which the black-haired S-class hunter turned to the recruits and said that they had better get ready if they did not want to become food for these lousy dogs. Suddenly, the paw of the blood wolf flew away from the monster's body and fell to the ground. The panting Li Changshik successfully destroyed his enemies. But not only he took a lot of effort to confront the infernal creatures. The blue-eyed kid turned to So Donkal. His strength was running out, and he didn't know how much more time they had to hold out. A scene from the past flashes before his eyes from Donkal. An absolute protector was placed on the table in front of him. The chairman said that this was a development of German scientists, made from a Class S core for a counterattack. After hearing this, the senior hunter is afraid to imagine how much money such a structure costs, but the man declares that the chief executive received it as a gift and in addition, he said that all hunters are like children to him, so he does not feel sorry for such things, if only the guys returned alive. After hearing such sincere words, so Donkal asked to convey his gratitude, and said that they would do everything in their power. Bowing, the chairman says that he believes in the guys and wishes them good luck. At the same time, on the battlefield, 
The down called decides that the moment has come when they will have to use the absolute protector. Looking around, the black-haired man asks if everyone is ready and after a few seconds declares that he is starting. Putting the snow-white cube on the ground, the Donko began its activation. Soon the cube lit up and the energy of the S-class ether began to ooze from its facets, and soon a protective dome appeared over the guys. The hunters present were amazed by such an exciting effect, because a high-class protector that had previously been used in the exam appeared before their eyes. Wild monsters began to attack the emerging dome but their attacks had no effect on such a high-class artifact, and so Donko was proud of the device made in Germany. Suddenly, the leader of the Blood Wolves appeared in front of the barrier. He pushed away from the ground and flew towards the dome, after which he struck a powerful blow from which the polygons of the barrier distorted. Seeing such a terrifying blow, the fighters were afraid because at such a pace the monsters would break their protector. Suddenly the point at which the heavy blow fell turned back like a jelly, thereby detaching the wolf and the cloak from himself. Realizing the problematic nature of this defense, Vols clenched his fangs, while so Donkal, along with the rest of the hunters, laughed at this amazing sight. Suddenly, a young man turned to the black-haired hunter who was interested in what they should do next, but the man picking his nose said that they had no plan, they should just hold out here. Turning to the rest of the guys, Sodonkal said that if something doesn't work out, then first you need to at least stay alive and then thoughts will appear by themselves. The guy said that the rest of the S-class guys should know what he was talking about, but Lee Changshik and Beck Heron had no idea. The rest of the hunters began to communicate with each other. They were worried that they had no plan for further actions, and while they were discussing it, an unknown hooded figure was hiding behind them. The maniac who created this portal was watching what was happening by getting involved in a group of hunters, but he did not like the situation in which they stopped, so after taking out a mysterious artifact, he decides to change his plans a little. In the next moment, the portal began to sparkle and numerous cracks were coming from it. Looking at this, people were discouraged and they could not understand how this was possible. From the torn portal, the real world and an abandoned building became visible. Seeing this, the wolf in armor smiled bloodthirstily and noticed that they still had some sense. There he decides to arrange his dinner party. On the asphalt near the portal, military forces were located that tried to restrain demonic creatures from the busy streets of Korea. But suddenly the bloody wolves broke through the fire defense and struck the soldiers with their claws. In the night sky, a monster in armor ascended above his brothers, after which he landed on the road. Immediately, the guns of the military were turned on the wolf in the red robe, but the metal bullets only buzzed like flies. Once waving its mighty weapon, the monster scattered the pathetic bugs in different directions. Suddenly, drones began to circle over the monster in metal gear. The wolf took a close look at the entertaining things and then decided to exterminate them with his breath. Due to the powerful roar, the flying electronics began to fail and the connection with the image coming to the screen was lost. In a rage, the chairman hit the control panel. After that he turned to the nearest guy and asked how things were going with the movement of the monster squad. In response, a confused employee said that they were now at Building H. The dark-haired man demanded to connect a high-level satellite screen and ordered to send reserve detachments to the portal. Korea at night was illuminated by a bright moon. A quadrocopter was flying in the dim sky. The kid under the nickname Seventh Dragon Young Soul greeted his viewers, and his broadcast took place directly from the scene of the incident. So for the sake of the video he put his life on the line. Standing on the roof of the building, he takes the drone under his control with the intention of shooting all the most interesting shots and thereby he wants to fulfill his dream to become the most famous streamer. After the guy gathered his thoughts, he asked the audience to write one to the chat if they could see the picture from the drone and two if not. The guys in the chat were writing units when they suddenly started writing to the chat that there was something behind the kid, but the blonde did not really appreciate this humor because he was risking his life anyway, and the audience was making fun of him. That's what he thought until he decided to look around. 
In front of the streamer sat a huge wolf who licked the clotted blood from his woolly beard, and from his mouth you could see the protruding limb of the previous victim. Seeing the monster, the boy's face turned pale and covered with sweat. Suddenly a severed limb fell on the concrete roof covering, and then the streamer jumped back in fear and fell to the ground. The blood wolf opened its wide mouth and rushed at the sweet kid, and he in turn began to call his mom. When suddenly the monster's huge head flew off his shoulders and swept past the streamer, the next moment the ruler of hell appeared in front of the youngster, dressed in his armor and holding his legendary sword. The blond-haired boy could not utter a word because his body was experiencing the wildest stress. At the same time the face of the defeated monster was flying away from the skyscraper and the flying drone recorded everything that happened. Looking at the brutal dark-haired guy, he recognized him as his past savior, and it was Han De Song. The next moment, the ruler of hell disappeared from the roof. At the same time the streamer rushed to his drone control panel. The guy who grew up in the ghetto found himself on the marked land, and in front of him stood a strange wolf in a red raincoat, and not only he alone, but all his brothers. However, the dark-haired man was not even embarrassed. On the contrary, with a smile on his face, he asked since when so many smelly dogs have been divorced in this area and also where is their pathetic owner. Upon hearing such a statement, the monster wrapped in metal armor clenched his fangs with rage, after which, with an axe in his hands, he tore at the careless scoundrel. A bright light illuminated the road from the collision of the strongest, but do not worry, the road was not damaged. The great Han De Song easily blocked the attack, and the strongest egoist asked if he should also strike. At this time, citizens were standing at the entrance to the bomb shelter near the Fells building and demanded that the doors be opened to them as soon as possible. Some of the people came across a stream in which the battle was being shown. Thus, all the people present got on the stream of the idol, seeing that a record number of viewers more than a hundred thousand people came on its air the guy swallowed saliva. And what surprised the blonde-haired guy that the kid who saved him from imminent death had not died yet, but still continued his fight. Looking back, the streamer wondered if he should already run for cover. Ion, who was standing in the observation room, also got on the live broadcast and said that the chairman should see it. Looking at the mobile phone screen, the man recognized this figure after which he demanded to immediately display the picture on the general screen. At the same time, the great Han De Song appeared before the leaders of the hunting association. The observers identified the boy because he recently took first place in the exam. However, the chairman, like others, could not understand why the guy is absolutely alone in the heat. A bunch of bloody wolves attacked the young man in armor, and the next moment they swallowed him as it seemed at first glance but in fact the black-haired man stood apart from the hungry wolves and mockingly asked them who did they lose. At the same time, fierce glances full of a thirst for murder were directed at the Lord of Hell, after which the wolves again began their reckless attack. At the same time, Han De Song plunged his stormy blade into the ground and uttered just one word rage. In the next moment, the crowd of mad wolves was covered with unbridled flames, howling in agony. The monsters burned in their sins, after which the subdued dogs fell to the asphalt. However, the vast hack of the pack did not stand aside and, seeing the suffering of his brothers, waved his mighty axe, thereby blowing away the blazing fire. Soon the monsters got back on their feet, not forgetting to express gratitude to their master. The wolf in armor orders the guys to continue cleaning the rest of the places while he deals with this insolent. Hearing such an audacious statement, the ruler of hell could not hide his smile. He was pleased to see such a confident doggy. After that, he decides to show who is the real master on this earth, and with a growing smile, he calls his demons from hell. The space around the devil king began to distort, and incredible energy began to emanate from him. The earth was once again enveloped in a magical light. Smelling such vile energy— even the bloodthirsty monster grimaced, but not only he, but also the nearby streamer could not understand what was happening. At the same time, a ball arc appeared in the sky, 
squatting on his pet seeing this, the guide began to stutter because a real dragon was in front of him. However, the performance did not end there. The Lord continued to call his troops. The chairman, who was watching everything that was happening from the observation room, opened his mouth wide and continued to stand silently. That night, something unimaginable happened in Korea for human eyes, which caught this phenomenon. Some hunters began to beg their Lord for mercy. Soon, the great Han Dae Song stood surrounded by his mighty subjects, seeing such unimaginable power. Even the stupid dogs lowered their heads in fear. Now the dark-haired man boldly declared that he would take this dog on himself, and the summoned demons would have to get rid of the rest of the garbage. Balor, sitting on his dragon, stood in front of a crowd of helpless monsters and Jean Kihan with a reserve squad of hunters watched everything that was happening from the side. Suddenly, the winged monster dug its huge fangs into the poor mutt after which the dragon's mouth closed and the wolf was split. Jean Kihan, who was watching this with his own eyes, was no longer able to understand what was going on here. Did the demons begin to exterminate each other? Or was this dragon an ally such thoughts were spinning in his head? Suddenly, a huge Morgenstern fell on one of the monsters, thereby crushing the dead wolf, after which the summoned demon raised his mighty weapons and continued his hunt. The helpless wolves wanted to leave the slaughterhouse, but the powerful bark also did not stand aside. He did not understand how such low creatures decided to resist such a noble being. The blood wolves had no choice but to whine pitifully, but the demon knew no mercy. Meanwhile, in a sealed bomb shelter, everyone present looked at the screen of their phone and watched what was happening on the surface but people could not understand what kind of madness was happening on earth monsters attacked monsters for some reason. Meanwhile, the doors leading to the association's observation room opened and a friend of the black-haired man entered them. Chan Ho introduced himself to the audience and stated that he was on the same team with Han Dae Song. The excited chairman thanked the guy for coming so quickly and since the guy was clearly aware of the situation, the man asked him to answer their questions right now. First of all, the man asked the guy what he could tell about Han Dae Song. Meanwhile, in the blood arena, the wolf in armor realized that the power used by the dark-haired guy did not come from this world. And based on this, the monster had one question, who the hell is this person? However, the smiling Han Dae Song, in turn, asked the lousy dog, did she not understand herself who was standing in front of her? At the same time, the guy no longer began to restrain his demonic energy and gradually began to step towards his enemy. The monster in metal armor declared that he was the king of the white wolves, after which, rushing from his place, he ordered the impudent man to bow before him. With these words, the monster in the red cloak struck his dazzling blow, from which the ground under the feet of the ruler of hell began to part at the seams but the guy absolutely calmly blocked such an attack. After which the dark-haired man asked frighteningly, Are you done? At the moment, the wolf lost all his confidence, and soon his instincts sounded the alarm. Han Dae Song began to strike with his sword. It was impossible to follow his movements. The only thing that was visible was the afterimages of the dark-haired guy. The king of the white wolves held an axe in front of him and held the blows. Meanwhile, the dark-haired man decided to ask since when has a level A gate boss been some kind of lousy dog. After these words, the sword of the ruler of hell digs into the ground, and the helpless monster in a red cloak dodges the insane attack. Looking back, the ruler of hell asks the dog why she is tumbling? However, the wary beast could not say a word. At the same time Han Dae Song lowers his sword and offers the wolf king to try to do something. Without thinking twice, the cowardly king rushes away from the real monster. Looking at this, the dark-haired one stops. Did he not come up with anything better than to escape? At this time, the ferocious wolf continued to overcome kilometers of distance. He decides to return back to his land, because he was not ready to meet such a demonic force from pandemonium. Suddenly, Han Dae Song appears near the beast who claims that dogs should not jump on two legs, after which the monster accelerates. 
However, the Lord of Hell will make him become an exemplary dog, 